canceled a trip to Georgia this morning after the suicide bomb assassination of that country's president by separatist rebels from the Abkhazia region. Continued fighting in the Abkhazia and South Ossetia regions has hindered Georgia's hopes of integration into Western institutions. Industry baron Kambain Nikolad seized power today in a bloodless coup, installing himself in the presidential palace behind a wall of political and military support. The charismatic billionaire plans on holding elections within a matter of days to affirm his seat of power and promises a pristine and profitable relationship with America and the West. Bringing high-speed fiber optic connectivity to areas of Eastern Europe that less than a decade past didn't have telephones. The technological leap is due largely to the efforts of rising information industries in the Netherlands, and especially Georgia, where President... The Vice President called his visit to Georgia an honor and called Georgian President Kambain Nikolads a man with his eyes on the future. CIA training farm. Prove that you are the right man for the job. As Agent Sam Fisher, you have been recruited to spearhead the operational arm of the National Security Agency's third echelon initiative. Before being sent into the field, you must demonstrate that you possess the skills to undertake dangerous and covert solo missions. Sam Fisher. I can't believe you beat me here. I'd like to be early. Hello, Colonel. You can use my name. The room's safe. Lambert. Good to see you again. I trust NSA orientation is going well? Well enough. Everybody's been real coy about what exactly I'm allowed to know. It's the nature of the agency. We don't let any one person know everything, which means we've all got to work together. Even though I'll be out there alone. You'll be transmitting to us in more ways than you can imagine and we'll be online through your earpiece and opsat. And that's how we're handling training. Yep. Sorry to make you run the course. I know you've been taking care of yourself. I haven't been in the field in years. Sure. But tradecraft is something you don't forget. It's like riding a bike. Or wearing high heels. <laughs> be careful, Fisher. Everything we say is being monitored. You know how nervous the brass is about exercising the fifth freedom. I'll be good. Be better than good. Third Echelon is a brand new initiative. The role aggressive intelligence operations will play in NSA's future will depend largely on your performance. I'll see you on the far side of the course. All right, Sam, let's get started. Can you hear me clearly? Hi there. Good. That means the implanted speaker is working correctly. Now, the technicians here want to calibrate your equipment. Can you turn to the red emergency light on the wall to your left? Great. Now the one on your right. Okay, same thing for pitch. Look for another light up in the rafters on the ceiling. Excellent. Now look for one on the ground in front of you. All right, Fisher, we'll get through this as quickly as possible. We'll start simple. Climb up onto that ledge, over that pool. Let you do your thing here. You're looking at your basic assault course. I'll chime back in once you've passed it. All right, ladies and gents, it's so good to be back in Sam Fisher's shoes. I have missed it. So I don't really need to talk about this training level. It's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to be able to easily figure it out. One thing I do got to tell you is that it does take a little bit of time to get used to the controls. This is a 2002 game, so obviously modern controls are somewhat implemented, and you still got a little bit of that old school, so it can take you some time to get used to it, but it's not too difficult. What are my expectations for this walkthrough? How are we going to make it different than the previous ones? So in the previous ones, I actually took out some soldiers that were in my way. This time... We are not going to do that. If there is a legitimate way to get around a soldier, we will find it. And you're going to see that firsthand in the first mission that we do, which uh, will be the next video. So I am just really, really excited for the Splinter Cell series. You know, all the talk that's been coming out lately and... Who knows what's going to happen? It's only speculation at this point, but you know it's being made. You know it's happening, and I'm very, very excited for it. I know a lot of you actually 
subscribe to the channel because of the Splinter Cell series. So hopefully I've been able to bring a few people back to kind of see uh, anything that's maybe have changed since the X, uh, original Xbox version. I'm actually playing the Xbox One X enhanced version in 4K. I've created a little bit of a border around the sides just to make it uh, so it's not, you know, two black screens on the sides. We don't want that, but please let me know if it is a little bit annoying. I can change it in any way because I want to make sure you guys get the best enjoyable experience that I can offer you. So one thing I wanted to always mention about the Splinter Cell series is this was one of those games where stealth was directly in your fingertips. This was before Metal Gear Solid 3 came out. Once Metal Gear Solid 3 came out, that changed, in my opinion, the way stealth was done in an open environment. But this is still, to date, one of the best stealth infiltration games on a linear basis, right? The Metal Gear Solid series kind of went more open world. Well, this is uh, more linear. So the controls here can be, like I said, a little bit Good job, difficult Bishop. to get used to, but you should you be able to. Now, since it is the original Splinter Cell, that means some of the moves that you're used to seeing, like if you're a fan of Chaos Theory or something like that, you're not going to be able to have. You can't take out uh, lights with your, what is it, OCP. Uh, as you can see, the jump controls can be a little weird to get used to, depending on where you're standing in front of the door. Uh, but I just want to thank you guys uh, for supporting the video. I've got new um, goals for Patreon, so I definitely want to make sure to get that out there. And on the end, end of every video, uh, Patreons are going to be able to shine as I'm going to show off uh, one of the tiers for Patreon from now on in all my videos. So hopefully you guys enjoy that, and let's continue on with the video. You're moving on into covert ops. The objective is to sneak through the area without being detected. We've got live bodies in there. Some of the top CIA instructors have kindly volunteered to be your victims. Now we actually get to get into the nit and gritty of the stealth gameplay. So you can actually open doors stealthily. Uh, clearly in the later Splinter Cells, it's better implemented. But here it's just pretty much just kind of a look around to see if you hear any noise. Because you really can't open the door slowly. It just opens a little bit and then it moves forward. The next door is locked, Sam. You'll need to use your lock picks to get through it. As you can see, I'm actually playing on the Xbox, so therefore you see the original Xbox Duke controller, which is so awesome. You've got the white and the black buttons on the bottom. Those represent LB and RB, so don't be confused by that. Uh, all it is is your shoulder buttons from now on, so it shouldn't be too difficult uh, for you to be able to understand. Now again, this game, you can use distractions in this game, but I will try not to use as many as, uh, as I can. This next door is keypad locked. The man guarding the door has the code to open it, but he's been instructed not to cooperate. Convince him otherwise. There will be a few instances where I will have to knock out enemies, but only those that are directly in my way and have to be taken out. Like, there's no other option. And I will make sure that I will go hours and hours until I can find out if there actually is an option oh. or not. Oh. 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 Hi there. Hi. You're not going easy on me, are you? <sighs> Not so tight, that hurts. Sorry about that. What's the door code? 28469. It was a pleasure working with you. Likewise. You gotta love that sound. The sound of knocking out, it's great. But we'll try to keep it to a minimum. It is gonna be tough, and we always like to create a challenge on this channel, so I will continue to do that until my dying day. Because video games do not cause people to hurt other people. This next door is retinal scanner locked. These things are cheap and near impossible to hack. Fortunately, it's just a matter of getting the right eyes to the scanner. Usually an officer. The gentleman ahead is registered for the scanner. Convince him to open the door for you. Now in the later games it gets a little bit better, but as of right now you have to get directly behind a guy and then press A once it shows up. Now this game is very hard when it comes to detection. I know you might think everything that you actually see me pull off looks easy, but I assure you it is not. You will go a long time wondering why am I being seen, why am I being heard, I'm moving slow or whatever, but the game 
on the hard difficulty can actually be a really, really good challenge. So I implore you, always make sure that you're making the proper decisions and choices when you run, when you walk, when you stealth, because it really does mean something. Let's work on stealth. Your gun should always be a last resort. Invisibility is your best weapon. You've got a network of photocells on your outfit connected to a visibility meter on your offset. If the meter's at four, you're lit up like a Dutch brothel. At zero, you're a ghost's shadow. One thing to note about weapons here is in the later games, I believe in uh, Pandora Tomorrow's when they add it, you can actually have a laser sight, which makes it a little bit easier to shoot. But here, the main thing you want to do is you never want to shoot when you're moving because your accuracy is going to be very low. Notice how the reticle gets smaller. So always wait to fire until that reticle is at its smallest. And even then, sometimes the bullet will not actually go where you want. So it can take a little bit of time to get used to, but I assure you, it's just the mechanics of being an older game. As you can see, even though you might be right on it, take your time, and then hopefully you will be able to. And of course, the amazing night vision. Still, to this day, one of the best night visions in a video game. I love the way it looks. I know it's not really realistic. Real night vision is actually more greenish, uh, more of a lighter greenish, I guess, or I don't know how you would say darker or lighter, but it just it doesn't look exactly the same, but this allows you to be able to see better. Are more fragile, and all you'll need to do to get past them is shoot them. Now there are some cameras that you will not be able to shoot and you can tell by the way that they're kind of made. So each camera will be different. We will be taking some cameras out and we will be trying to just bypass some cameras. So I'll try to have a mixture of that. My goal also is to try not to take any damage. I, I did that on my last playthrough, but there was one instance in the game that I actually took damage and didn't realize it. So I'm gonna even try to focus harder, try not to take damage, but it's not a guarantee that I'm going to do this playthrough without taking any damage. But I am gonna give it a shot as sometimes when you fall from a distance or smoke gets in you you might still take some damage sometimes the only way to pass a camera will be to stick to existing shadows and time your moves shadow is a huge thing in this game so definitely use it to your advantage know where your shadows are always look at your meter on the right side and you Knock should be able to be fine. In the corridor and hide his body before the patrolling guard finds it. Now, I believe in some of the next Splinter Cell games, you're actually able to go up, knock someone out, immediately grab their body without them falling. But you can just do this. You can just grab them, take them back, and then put them in a corner and then knock them out instead of having to actually pick them up. But everything is context sensitive. So once you knock someone out, you have to uh, bend down or crouch and then actually hit the A button once it appears to okay, knock them out for sure. Let's bring or in pick them up. Guard to evaluate your work. Now, I will not be talking during cutscenes and all that kind of stuff, but this is the training mission, so I probably might talk a little bit over someone or whatnot. Now, for being 2002, the AI is actually pretty darn good, and you're going to see that in... Well, you're not really going to see how good the AI can be. It's actually going to look like the AI is pretty bad when you actually play it really stealthy. But maybe if some people want, I can do a video showing off of how actually good the AI can be, even hearing the slightest noise or something like that. But you're usually not going to see it in this video. Remember that discretion is critical to our operations. Covering up the evidence of your passing through will go a long way towards proving our usefulness in the field. I think it's been about six years since my previous Splinter Cell walkthrough of this game. I just can't believe how long it's been, but I am so glad again to be back. Thank you everybody for motivating me. The next hallway is the same idea, but for sound. I'll be monitoring a few hidden mics. Also, if anyone would like a no commentary playthrough of this, if you would like to have the game without my commentary over the top of it, let me know and I'll be more than happy to um, uh, make the videos no commentary as well and have uh, kind of like maybe two playthroughs up. But I want to gauge the interest in that to see if you guys actually want that or not. A lot of people like the commentary uh, to explain certain situations of when you're going through the game. Other people just want the the game itself so let me know if you guys want a separate walkthrough for no Have commentary you started yet? fisher holy christmas you're at the end phenomenal work let's move on 
that's going to be it as far as me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this first video. Please give it a like, thumbs up, all that great stuff. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, also follow me on Facebook where I live stream every single day as of right now. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. Love you all. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. That's got to be him. Yep. Sam Fisher. Let me introduce you to Vernon Wilkes Jr. Hello. Hey. I've heard crazy things about your work. I hope you don't mind. I told him some of your stories from Kuwait. We're all friends here. Right on. Junior Wilkes is a longtime NSA employee. He'll be your wheels, wings, and weapons. He coordinates transportation and equipment. Great. For sure. Man, you must be itching to get back out in the field, huh? It's all I'm good at. Well, it's all we need. Welcome to the NSA. I'm sure things are going to come together famously. Third Echelon is a brand new initiative, and we're going to have a lot to prove. Right. The two of you will be Third Echelon's first team on the ground. Be ready for it, and do us proud. Welcome to the NSA. Locate CIA agents Blaustein and Madison. Agent Allison and Madison work covertly in the Georgia Politician Arena for two years, securing a role under President Nikolai's cabinet after his coup d'etat. She vanished on October 3rd. October 7th, Special Agent Robert Blaustein was sent in to find her. He vanished on October 11th. Fisher, the sun's down. Time to go to work. Finding Agent Blaustein's our first priority. To locate him through a local NSA contact. I'm on my way. And stay off the streets. There's a heavy cop presence in this town. We don't have Washington's backing if this turns into an incident. Details on your offset. Welcome back, ladies and gents. I'm your host, Industry 01. And this is the second mission in Splinter Cell 1. This is, again, the Xbox One X enhanced version in 4K. Let me know if the sides look a little bit better. Hopefully they're not as bad. Don't tell me. Jurgen and Zay is inside there. Sam, Grim's daughter here. I say jump. Don't no want no You should get through this fine. There's a room directly across the hall. Go there now. Sam, sorry about that. Get back into the hall and go to the stairwell at the far end. Make it fast. You've only got a few seconds. As you can see, it's not too difficult to get through here. Um, you just gotta kind of get used to the controls a little bit. Jesus, but that was close. Take a left just ahead and cut through the room. You'll find a stairwell on the opposite corner. Take it to the top floor. Once we get upstairs, we're gonna need to interrogate a guy up there. He's gonna tell us exactly what's been going on in the area. The contact is in this room. Let's hope to God he's still alive. You're gonna say, yeah. I'm in this city. We're gonna get you out of here. Don't bother. I'm as good as dead. We're looking for Blaustein and Madison. Yeah. Madison was deep into Nicolazzi's cabinet. She was onto something big. Blaustein must have figured it out. How do I find him? Blaustein's black box, tracking the relay for his subdermals. It's stashed in his safe house just east of Moravia Square. Lambert. Do we have resources to evac this guy? I said don't bother. Whatever Madison found, it's big. She kept saying proof would mean war. I think Nicolaz wanted... Oh. You're gonna say checked out. Leave the corpse for the fire. He has to explain to his family. You've got a safe exit on the west side of the room. Take it. Make sure you shoot out this glass panel. It's going to clear the smoke, which will actually prevent you from taking damage as long as you shoot out the glass panel. And then we're going to move on to the next section, where it can get uh, a little bit more tougher as we now have enemies that we need to bypass civilians as well, and they can actually uh, see you very easily, so it can be kind of tricky. That was pretty tight. Still breathing? Doing my best. Good. Blaustein's black box is your next objective. If he's running standard agency tradecraft, you'll find the box behind a fake bookshelf or wall panel. 
Again, I want to thank all the patrons out there that make it possible for me to be able to make these videos. So if you haven't already, please become a patron as it completely helps us to be able to continue to do what we love to do. And since we have new Patreon goals on there, so you can check that out in the description below. You can just bypass this guy. We're going to wait here by the window. Even though you do not see him, there is a guy heading this way right now. It just took too long to head over the rail before we were actually able to see him. So time it right and open the window as well as go through the door as soon as he is coming through. Controls can make it a little bit weird. Uh, when you're going through a window like that, sometimes you can just jump and then make noise. So uh, checkpoints are very, very generous in this game. So you will not have to worry too much about restarting checkpoints and whatnot. But this is the old linear system of video games. So you're going to get checkpoints like every five minutes. Make sure you look at the code. Dang. What's the news? Blaustein's heart stopped beating 43 hours ago. Any reason the CIA wouldn't know about this? Nope. Nicer than the share. The subdermal went offline six hours after he died. Last active position was in a police station a few blocks away. Check your ops at. During this time, if you missed any jump, if you just jumped randomly, if something didn't work, if you did not land right there softly, then you will have alerted the guards. And we want to go with no alerts unless we actually use a distraction method to get by them. At least that is the goal for this walkthrough. The only time you're ever going to hear any weird noises is because I have distracted someone in order to be able to get by them without uh, having to take them out, which you're going to see up ahead. Uh, most playthroughs you're probably going to watch on this game, Fisher, they're not going to do that. I'm rescinding my street level restriction. They've been monitoring the Tbilisi police radio. These cops are as crooked as a Virginia fence. They're not going to want any more international attention than we do. Every road is open to you. Do what you gotta do to find those missing spooks. Lockpick system, pretty simple to use. What I used to do is actually something you don't have to do. All you have to do is just place your thumb pad in the correct position. You do not have to wiggle back and forth. Uh, I've always wiggled back and forth for years, and then I feel realized that you actually don't have to do that. This section can be the toughest. Uh, there are a lot of civilians in windows that you have to watch out for. Now, just because they see you doesn't mean they're alarmed or doesn't mean that you've been spotted or they're anything like that. We just want to be as professional as possible. So get down about halfway. If you're too high on the stairs, uh, he will actually jump up, grab the ledge, and then head over it, which will obviously get you caught. So make sure there's enough room for you to jump and you to grab it instead of actually jumping over it. There's a guy right above you right here in the window, so you still want to move slowly and you want to stay in the darkness. Here, once this guy turns around, you can move forward. There's a guy in the window up ahead, so stick to the left side and go up against the wall. He will not see you if you're up against the wall. A lot of people here... Might actually just go ahead and take the guy out on the stairs, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go hide in this corner over here on the right side while this other guy is still in the window. He's looking back and forth, so timing can be very, very crucial. And that's going to be the same thing up ahead in just a little bit. Uh, it's very tough to get by this one guy in the window. But we're dealing with a warehouse fire, so expect delay. So once he moves past you, what you're going to want to do is start to move forward, but you're going to want to wait. As long as you do not see the guy in this window, he will not see you from the other window, okay? You're good to go, which means he's walking back and forth at that time. There's also another guy in the windows that you see right there. So be careful. Timing might be a little different, but mostly it's always the same because when you enter an area, that's when the enemies actually spawn in. It's an old game. It's not like it is now where enemies are already pre-spawned. Here, you want to wait because this guy is going to be there. And there's also a guy that just came through the gate that opened it up. Once he turns, you're free to move. You can move as fast as you want just while crouched, but make sure you stay to the right side as there is a guy directly above us and there's a guy behind us. You can't see them because I'm all nice and still flack. Make sure you pick up this distractible item right here unless you want to use your weapons but i will try to limit the amount of weapons that i use for distractions as i would rather use something that's in the environment we're going to head to the right to sneak this guy there's also a guy inside the window as well so you want to be careful make sure you don't see them or make sure that his back and the window is turned you can go ahead and move up get in this dark spot here and then we're going to set a distraction point now most time you're going to usually take this guy out because he goes into a position where he just stands there and you cannot get past him without jumping on top of him or knocking him out this way. So we try to make it a little bit more challenging. 
there is the music for a distraction. It doesn't mean we're caught or anything. It just means that we, that a guard is investigating a noise. There, this guy can be the most bothersome to worry about. So the only way you're going to be able to get by him without him being alarmed or spooked is you do it on his way back to the window that he's currently at. So you're going to watch him do like a little head bop here. Then you're going to see him start moving right. You do not want to go. If you go, he will see you because he looks directly into the window on the right side. So you want to wait about five seconds and then go. If you do so, he will be moving back to the other window and then you can get by without him making the noise of him seeing something which will alert guards uh, to your area. But it doesn't, and it also means that a civilian saw someone, uh, which I'm not sure if it's actually an alarm or not, but we want to, you know, not have that happen, so. Well, that's the hardest section to me in this uh, level, so I hope you guys enjoyed that, and we'll move on to the next one. Code is already actually inside our opsat, so make sure you read it. Go to your notes. Here, you're also going to make sure you grab a distractible item because there is one guard that stands directly in front of you where the mission objective is, and he will not move Who unless you distract him. So you most people are going to take him out. I'm not going to do that. We're going to find a way around him. And that one took not really a lot of time, but he can do different things, and you'll see that as you come up. Here, just get up against the wall, and then we're going to move right alongside here. We're not going to be getting all of the data sticks and anything like that because I've done that before. We don't need to do that again. We just want to make this as challenging as we can. There's actually a guard in the room to the left, so don't make any noise. Don't be seen or that guard will come out of that room. It's a closet. I don't know why a guard is just waiting in the closet. This guy is actually a civilian. He's not a guard itself, but he's in here like kind of uh, working. So we want to go ahead and get in the back here and uh, identify the bodies. In order to do this, there's a camera. This camera cannot be shot. So wait till the camera is all the way on the left side, and then we're going to move to the right, and then we're going to get to an angle where he can't see us. Get as close as you can to the bodies first, because it's kind of tough uh, timing-wise. Wait till, again, it is on the right side. Move towards the bodies, and then we're going to head away. I've got Agents Blaustein and Madison. Rest in peace. Somebody cut out their subdermals. Where do we go from here? We follow the subdermals if we can. Mm -hmm. There's a security camera here. Good thinking. We'll track the subdermals from the video archives. The station surveillance room is on the top floor. This guy is going to be kind of doing a back and forth. He goes on the left, he sits in the middle, and then he goes to the right, and he goes to the middle, to the left, and he repeats that process. There is a can that we can grab. This was the closest can that I found uh, in order to use a distraction. I had to not find any other distractible items moving forward, so this is the one that you actually want to grab. It might be the only one in this level, I'm not sure. But once you see that it's clear, grab it, move slowly, obviously. If you move any fast at all, they will hear you and you will be caught. AI is actually pretty good in this game and I was very impressed. Even though I maybe not make it look like they're good, I assure you, the slightest movement, you will be caught. This section is pretty simple. We're going to move in, head all the way to the right side, and we're going to go around the back and into the left. There's a guy that kind of moves up forward. He's a civilian. You don't want to worry about him too much, but stay in the black areas. I'm trying not to use my night vision as much as I can because I want to show off how beautiful the game is instead of having this night vision look of the game. So hopefully you guys can still see and everything looks clear. Once you head up the stairs, this uh, section can be a little difficult. We're going to move all the way along to the back right. There's actually a guy being detained in the back door there. You will need a lockpick to break it if you wanted to, but there's no reason for the mission at hand. This is the reason we got the distractible item. Normally, you'd take this guy out and you would use the, uh, the computer. So this guy does different things, all right? Every single time, he's going to go for the can. He'll turn around, but then he'll move forward. Once he moves forward and out of the way, that is when you want to grab the computer. When you grab the computer, he'll do two different things. Either he'll head out of the, the room completely and you need to follow him and get to a safe spot or do what I do here. Great work, Fisher. We're scanning the videotapes now. There, that's our guy. We got him red-handed. And you run his face through echelon. Already on it. Hey, check it out. A license plate. 84KP214. Fantastic. Fisher, we got what we need. Rendezvous with Wilts, your work here is done. 
we'll get back to you once we've sifted this intel. I'll let somebody else. As I said, sometimes he'll actually move forward into the main room, but this time he decided not to. I don't know what triggers it, but it is different. So just be prepared for either situation. Get back in here, and we're going to start uh, to exit the level. But wait. A true splinter cell leaves no stone unturned. Always pick up your objects. Don't leave any traces. We are a splinter cell. Move your way slowly through this next section. Pretty easy. We're going to head out the door that we actually passed downstairs. And that is going to be it. Obviously for mission number two, or considered the first mission, depending on how you look, uh, the training mission or not. Fairly simple mission. The missions from here on are going to get a little bit tougher. But this was the first time I've done it without taking anyone out, whereas before I actually took out the guy when I jumped on top of him. Because uh, I thought you had to. But no, you don't. You can figure it out. You can do it stealthy. You can do a no-KO run of this level. Mark a steady rise in Georgia's economy. Once central to the former Soviet Union's development and manufacture of weapons, Georgia has recently resurfaced as a potential player in the world military industry, with active contracts in Russia, Turkey, Germany, and even... has stated the need, especially in these times, for a reliable source of oil in the Middle East. Commerce Secretary Moore, on a visit to Azerbaijan this morning, noted the tiny nation's enormous potential for oil, calling on American investors to provide the necessary funds for tapping the reserves. In many ways, a leader from a bygone era. His beliefs are very firmly founded in Georgian orthodoxy. His political standings more in line with the early 20th century. Would you fault him then as a politician? No, no, not at all. Kumbe Nikolaitz is all politician. He's done wonders for the Georgian economy. A brilliant tactician. It's more a question of ethics. And ethically speaking? Well... Discover President Nikolaitz's secret. CIA agent Blaustein and Madison were killed for getting too close to information Georgian President Kambay Nikolaitz needed to protect. Yavshis Krinko, Russian mercenary, is closely tied to Nikolaitz's secret. They have arranged to meet in the Ministry of Defense. It's go time. Echelon got a positive ID on your target from the morgue security cameras. A guy named Vyacheslav Vinko. How do I find him? By his license plate. And if he's not with his car? Then his driver will be. Grab him and make him talk. Don't be afraid to use force. Who? Me? Grimm's daughter just pulled up the schematics on the Ministry. They've got a laser security grid online in the courtyard. So I stay out of the courtyard. Don't let them trigger any alarms at all. We still don't have any official approval from the Joint Chiefs for this operation. So one slip up and it's mission over. All right, ladies and gents, you heard Lambert. We need to get in, get out, obviously, without being seen. Easy peasy in this first beginning section, not too difficult. We're going to be heading downstairs. Now, since this is a no KO, this is a kind of getting in and getting out without being seen. We're going to bypass cameras. We're going to do all of that stuff without having to shoot them. Now, there is one camera later that you do have to kind of deal with, but we're just going to shoot the light out because we don't, we're going to try to limit ourselves from actually shooting any cameras and I feel if you were to shoot a camera it doesn't make any sense because whoever is watching the other side of that camera obviously is going to know something is up and we don't want to do that so we're always going to go around cameras instead of shoot them if the game will allow us once we head into the garage we just need to uh, find the actual driver and then we are going to interrogate him first part of this level very very simple thanks to the patrons out there for making it possible for me to make these videos I appreciate it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Think about becoming a patron as it helps me to keep making these videos and, and uh, allows me to be able to give back to you guys as well. So check out the link in the description. And of course, it is time to interrogate the driver so we can get some information. It is a mandatory knockout. What the hell? I'm going to ask you some questions. When I think you're lying, I'll do this. I... Who do you work for? Vyacheslav Grinko. Tell me about him. He used to be Spetsnaz. Now he's mercenary. He works for President Nikolaitz. Where do I find Rinko? He is meeting Mass in the elevator by the courtyard. Who's Mass? Philippe Mass, some computer guy. 
He has access to Nikoladze's office. What's this meeting about? I don't know. I swear, it's gotta be something bad if Nikoladze is willing to see Grinko face to face. I need you to understand that we never talked. I understand. Good. Convince me we never talked. If anybody finds out, Grinko will murder me. And you're frightened of Grinko. God, yes! <laughs> I want to hear what Grinko and Mass talk about in that elevator. I'll need to deactivate the courtyard laser grid to get in position. Then do it. Once we are making our way back up, there is going to be a guard here. He's very easy to get around. All you have to do is throw a bottle. He's the guard that was upstairs patrolling the hallway before we came down into this area. So just place one outside in the middle. It doesn't matter. Most of the time, he's always going to do what you need him to do, which is he's going to head towards the bottle. He's immediately going to turn around and look in your direction. So make sure you do not go just yet. Wait till he turns back around. The camera is too far to see you. There's actually a camera right there to our left, but it will not see you when you get to this point. Please remember that there are still, if you have done it the way that I have, or maybe you've already taken out the cameras, there's still two cameras for us to worry about. So do not rush and always be aware of your surroundings. That's what makes these games so great. And that's what makes them more challenging is that for those of us that want that challenge, we need to realize that we have to slow our roll and we have to be aware of our surroundings. Every single time we get to an objective, every single time we get to a new room, study it, look at it, figure it out. And I'm telling you, it's so much more rewarding than if you just kind of rush in and shoot everybody. Here, we don't have distraction items, but we do have an amazing ability. It is called the jump. So all we're going to do is try to get close enough to wear him to hear us, but still remain undetectable, meaning that we're still in the, in the dark so he doesn't actually see us. It can be a little tricky, but you can still do it. He's going to do the same thing as the previous guy, which is immediately turn around to the other side as soon as he gets where he's going. Wait, then he'll just randomly move off into another direction, and at that point, you're free to go. Shouldn't be able to hear anything, and you should be able to make it to the next area without any problems. There is a camera right above you here, so make sure you immediately turn right and turn the light off. In my opinion, if someone's watching the camera and then the light goes off all of a sudden, hey, things happen. That's a lot better than all of a sudden someone shooting a camera, the noise of the fire and everything could still be heard. Makes sense to me. So we're gonna go move on with the next section after we do this lock pick here, uh, which is actually gonna be a little bit tougher, uh, but still having Maybe a lot of fun playing the old Splinter Cell games. Let me know which one is your favorite, which Splinter Cell game is actually your favorite. Mine is still Chaos Theory, uh, but I would love to know what yours is in the comments. I need a kernel down here. We're trying to get through a retinal scanner. I passed Colonel Kibiashvili on my patrol. Want me to send him down? God, no. I hate this guy. We'll find somebody else with the land. As far as here goes, we're just going to go inside. We're immediately going to get into a crouch position before we enter the room. And we're going to wait for the security guard to come in and watch the magic. I thought the kitchen was closed. It's a special order for Colonel Kabayashvili. Ah, excellent. <laughs> May I? Please. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I just love the type of commentary that this game can actually provide. A lot of really, really funny moments. But we're going to go ahead and move on, and we're going to be throwing this. Wait till the guy actually leaves. If you want to, you can actually do all that beforehand. As soon as you enter the room, you can throw the bottle, and all three of the guards, or two of the cooks, and one of the guard will immediately do what I just did there. But I kind of like that little scene that plays out with him uh, doing that. But as soon as you exit, make sure you go around to the other side. He's going to come in. He's going to turn on this light. If you're quick enough, you can get out before he actually turns on the light and you're ready to go. Now I'm gonna have a bloopers video or kind of a fun Easter egg kind of video here after the game, after I complete the game. And uh, there was one time, it's not in this one right here, but the time before this when I was recording, obviously, uh, the game glitched and the Colonel stayed upstairs and he never came down. So I wanted to see if I could do it. And I actually figured out a way how to get the Colonel uh, by going back upstairs without actually getting caught and then have to drag him all the way down 
without getting caught. It's actually pretty fun to watch. I wanted it to actually be in this video, but it just didn't look smooth um, because it was a glitch, so therefore I decided not to have it in there. You've got an incoming colonel, Fisher. Make the most of him. You'll need him conscious and cooperative if you want to unlock the retinal scanner sealing the door to the courtyard. That's detailed intelligence. Knowing everything is my job. Here, we're going to wait for the colonel to actually come down. This is what he scripted it's supposed to do. But as I said before, he didn't come down, so we actually had to go all the way upstairs, two floors, and find a way to drag him down without taking anyone else out. And it was a challenge, and it was so cool to actually pull it off. It just wasn't very smooth, obviously. So jump as soon as he gets down, and then we can actually take him out and not worry about anyone else. That is the whole point of this. There are two mandatory knockouts in this entire level. And those are the only guys we're going to mess with. So we're going to drag his body all the way over to the retinal scanner. There is no other way to do this. You have to take him, drag him before you knock him out, and then um, use the retinal scanner. Then you, you know, can knock him out, put him in a corner somewhere, and you're good to go. Uh, I did all of this during my live stream on Facebook. So if you have not, for any reason, come over... Uh, and checked out some of the live streams that we do. We learn our levels over there, so that way I can bring them to you guys here on YouTube. So support me over there if you want. If not, that's fine. The videos will be here for your enjoyment. Oh. It's time to head outside. You can pick up that satchel if you want. It's a medical first aid, not something we need. Glass elevators in motion. Make with the laser, Mike Fisher. It's mission critical that we hear what Grinko and Mass say before they reach the top. Abigail, why did you rip it out with pliers? We had some difficulty with Blostein's ship. You can see fibers of muscle tissue still attached. Nasty. Nasty. You're in the wrong line of work to avoid getting girl on your hands. Whatever Nikolaj does in Azerbaijan is his own conscience's burden. You are just a tool? You're a tool. I'm the technology. I'm the cleanup man. All the blood's on yours and Nikolaj's hands. I'm clean. And it is? It's what? Clean. Azerbaijan? Yeah, man. The operation's goddamn immaculate. Except for the files Nikolaj insists on keeping on his own machine. You need to talk to that... Sounds like we found the subdermals. I get nervous when the bad guys start making blood jokes. That conversation's going straight to the Joint Chiefs, and we're gonna need more. Nikolaj's computer. You guessed it. Get inside his office and access that machine. Alarms aren't mission critical anymore. We're moving into Fifth Freedom territory. Once you're in her, you're into a new location, and we're gonna start the next area. Immediately there are going to be enemies here that are coming downstairs in the elevator. So we're just going to get to the room that's directly next to the elevator. And for those of you that don't know, yes, this is after the fact commentary because I wanted to focus to bring you guys the smoothest and best gameplay that I could and then be able to do the after commentary so I know exactly what I need to talk about. And uh, again, sometimes in these missions you can be repeating sections for an hour to two hours, especially in <laughs> mission number, or should I say the next mission, the oil rig mission, which is a very, very tough mission to do without taking damage and without being seen. So... Sometimes you're going to need that after the fact commentary, but most of the time it's always usually recorded during the mission. But for the Splinter Cell series, I prefer to do it after just so I can make it as smooth and enjoyable as possible. So once we head up this elevator here, we're going to save again and then we need to hurry up and use one of our disposable picks. There is a guy that's going to be entering into this area at some point, so you do want to be a little bit quick. You might as well use them. Remember, we have two and we haven't used any. Why not? It's disposable. It self-destructs once you use it. <laughs> you can grab whatever you want on the computer. You can get a data stick. Again, none of this information is needed, but it's there if you want. If you're a diehard purist, we've done that already. This is strictly that stealth, get in, get out, quickly without being seen. This is what I was talking about earlier, where the camera is either you're going to have to shoot it, or you're gonna have to take out the light next to it. I decided to take out the light next to it because I feel, again, 
Sam Fisher would not shoot the camera. It doesn't make sense. However, in Splinter Cell, the accuracy in this game is very, very bad. So it might take you four, five, six, seven, eight, nine shots before it actually works. But eventually, <laughs> you'll be able to shoot it. And, you know, SMH. So we're going to move to the roof now. On the other side of this room, if you wanted to, there's four guards and a break room. There are two data sticks you can get, which actually show you pretty much the same information that you're going to get inside Nikolaz's room. But you still got to do the main objective. This section can be a little tough, but then again, it's actually kind of easy. It just depends on RNG. So we're going to be coming down here. Now, what's supposed to happen is you shoot the light, the glass breaks, and you enter the room with that little section dark. However, my aiming is just so impeccable and so perfect that uh, I don't break the glass, so I have to shoot twice. But immediately when you come in, make sure you get back out before this guy sees you. This time, he's just on his regular routes. He's not doing anything in particular. This is what he does back and forth once you break the glass. He does not change from this. This is what he does. You want to get up as soon as he heads to your right from the middle point. This will give you enough time to get the information you need and quickly head back to right where you were. Christ almighty. What do you have? Bad things. Keep transmitting. We need to see how far this goes. What's going on? Corpses, refugee camps. They've had commandos at work in Azerbaijan for weeks. How the hell did we miss this? Keep transmitting. Alert! All men for full alert! We have an intruder in Nikolaj's office! Wake up, you bastard! I want troops in there now! Grinko, sir. I've got three men about to brief Nikolaj's office. As you can see, the enemies are entering. Stay here, do not move. They will not see you. But if you do move slightly left or right, you do run the risk of them seeing you. So I recommend stay put, don't do anything. They're only in here for about 15 seconds and they're back out. This guy, he is still on his same pattern. Fisher, we need the rest of the files from Nikolaj's computer. This stuff is going straight to the president. Might be headed for military action and we're going to need airtight proof. Once he crosses you on the right side, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, get back up, do the exact same thing, but this time the door's open and you can head out. You will have enough time to get out of there. That's the end of it. Thank God. What exactly is going on? You wouldn't. And we didn't know about it. Nobody did. What does he want? You can watch the news later. Rendezvous with Junior Wilkes for extraction. Make sure you completely run through this section. Do not stop. Keep running. Guards will see you if you slow down. This office is clear. We're heading for the rear gangway. Who's there? Come out! I want an update. Why hasn't the intruder been caught yet? Do we have men on the rear stairwell? I'll reach the stairwell. Exit the point. Looks like our man took care of business, and we are done with this mission. What the hell did you find in there, man? Lambert's flipping out big time. What's he saying? That we're going to war. Georgian special forces have taken hold of villages scattered throughout Azerbaijan. Incredibly, Kambayn Nagalads appears to have been able to move thousands of troops across the border over a course of weeks, completely hidden from both local and international authorities through a high-tech... Number of Azerbaijani casualties are unknown, but early estimates number in the high... The freedom-loving people of the world cannot stand idly by and allow an act of such staggering inhumanity and scale. In their third day of fighting, U.S.-led NATO troops took three more Azerbaijani villages occupied by Georgian special forces. U.S. troops met only light resistance and suffered minimal casualties. The Georgian commando cells are becoming increasingly hard to locate as military intelligence suffers repeated... Kumbayn Nikolads has vanished along with his top military advisors. Speculation points to Nikolaj's fear of a war crimes tribunal as motivation. A two-minute webcast from locations unknown, Georgian President Kumbayn Nikolaj called America and its allies an army of scarecrows, declaring them helpless to defend themselves or their homeland. The precise nature of Nikolaj's threat, experts fear, could make itself known within... 
Retrieve Georgian communication data. NATO and the U.S. intervention has pushed most of the Georgian commandos from Azerbaijan with only a few well-hidden cells remaining. One of those cells entrenched in an oil rig on the Caspian Sea is exchanging data with the presidential palace in Georgia via a secure network. It's go time. Fisher, we've uploaded your mission objectives. Grimstarter says the rig's encryption protocols are bulletproof, so we're going to have to let one of Nikolaj's geeks log on before we get a chance at any intelligence. Why would they be holding onto this rig? It's not Nikolaj's smartest play. That's what got our attention. Nikolaj is sacrificing several cells to hold on to it, so whatever's coming over the network must be critical. Mission objectives on your offset. Visual on hostile forces. We're blowing the bridge immediately. Repeat, blowing the bridge. Welcome, ladies and gents, to one of my favorite Splinter Cell missions, definitely one of the shorter missions, but also one of the more challenging missions, depending on how you play it. We're going for that non-KO run-through, except for the mandatory one that we actually have to do. Other than that, we're going to be getting by everyone, taking no damage, and we're going to make it look super, super easy, even though it is actually super, super tough. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video, and let's continue on. Bad news, Fisher. Something got the military's attention. Oh, boy. Your rig just got bumped into the single digits on NATO's strike list. Find yourself a technician and get that down. Time just got scarce. Everybody look lively. Our computer technician is returning with the encryption key. I need two men to meet him at the docking station and escort him to the data hub. Let's get this finished quickly. We're a sitting duck out here. All right, so all I can say is that this part took a very, very long time to be able to get everything work the way that you wanted to, so do not expect you to be able to pull it off very, very simple and easy. Hopefully, that with the way that I'm showing you how to do it, it's going to make things a lot simpler for you. But this took a little bit of trial and error to actually figure out to make sure that we can get the game to work the way we want. So what you're going to want to do, as soon as you get up here, you want to make a little bit of noise. And the reason we do that is it's going to stop the guard at the end. It's just going to make getting through the next section slightly easier since we don't have to worry about him taking too long because he will start his patrol pattern. So getting a little bit of a distraction there goes a long way in saving you about 10, 15 seconds. Relay alert from Philip Mass. We have incoming American warplanes. We got some American warplanes coming in, and I remember specifically in my last playthrough of this, I sang the American song from uh, Team America World Police. <laughs> oh boy, I was something special back then, wasn't I? But as you can see here, you've got this guy right here. If you time it correctly and you do the distraction like I did in the very beginning where you made a little bit of noise, you can actually just move straight down and then through. If not, then you're going to have to wait for him to come back and then go back. So it saves you like 15 seconds or so. Here it can be very tricky. Slow your roll down a little bit so this guy doesn't hear you. And move immediately to the left. There is a guy looking straight in your direction at all times, but luckily the other guys are directly in the way, so it's not too bad as long as you stick to the left. We're going to be waiting right here for the guy that's going to be coming. That's our friends from the Air Force. Ground troops are imminent. We'll keep you updated. He's going to turn this way, and then he'll move back the other way. That is when you want to move up. Get under attack! He's sustained heavy damage to... Get up against the wall. As you can see, it can be a little tricky sometimes. Immediately move to the left. Do not go to the right. I have been able American to make it to the left. Planes. They're coming in again. Reports of incoming troop transport. But if you want to make it every single time, go to the left instead of the right. You can go to the right, but it's very, very tricky. You can't move fast okay. because this guard up here will hear you. It can be tricky, but you can accomplish it. So We just went with a safer route. We're going to switch this object, which is going to get their attention. See? It's still spraying. I swear, I cut it off. Sure you did. I did. Now, we're not going to move forward into the room where we just saw them go, as there's no way out, and it's 
pretty much a trap because if you go in there and you wait too long, these guys will come back and then you can't leave again without distractions or taking them out. So we're going to move to the right side. Just want to wait here until they actually get a little bit closer. Hardest part of the mission is technically over. I mean, the rest, you're going to be able to literally just run right through. And if you do not want run right through, you will not come out without taking damage or being spotted. This way actually allows you, yes, running straight through after this section right here allows you not to be spotted and not to take any damage. If you do not do it this way, you will take a lot of damage, probably die, and you will be spotted. Change of plans, Fisher. You're going after that technician. Downloaded the data to that. To a left on the right. Use whatever force necessary. Drop down this guy is focused somewhere else, but do not run yet, because he can still turn around and start following you. Now just start running from this point. Do not stop running. Run, run, run. You notice a guard right next to that door. If you run, you're able to get through the door before the guard notices you and the door closes. So as you can see, we ran straight through and we're good to go. If you're crouched into the right side, you don't have to worry about that explosion. You do take no damage and nobody sees you whatsoever. And at this point, you just run straight through. There's also another door on the other side where you do not actually need to use your lockpick, but it's up to you. This way actually gives you a lot more time to catch up with the guy than the other way. Just grab him, interrogate him, and the mission's pretty much over. Who the hell are you? Don't ask any questions. Answers only fast. I am the fan. Why risk manually extracting the data from the battle? That's the only way. We cleaned it with a non-transferable. Boy, on use hard key. What's the data? I'm just a messenger. I don't know. Something about an arc. What's that? I don't know. What Nico Lads want most. Where were you going to take the briefcase? I don't know. I wasn't going to find out until I was on board the escape ship. Mass is a complete control freak. Mass. Please, I don't want to. Ah! Philip Mass. Nico Lads is need programmer. I swear that's all I know. And that's pretty much it, ladies and gents. We're just going to knock him out. We're going to take his satchel, and we're going to take the briefcase, and that will be the end of the mission. How much longer is this going to take? Your daughter's on the line. Just running the encryption. Black hell! What's up, Gerb? The data you glommed off the rig. There's no way the Georgians could have gotten this much intel without a man inside the CIA. Fisher, you're up. Sarah. Hi. Where are you? On my way home. I thought you were gonna call last week. Something came up. I'm sorry. That's all right. Were you in Georgia? Honey, you know I can't answer that. Yeah, I know. I was just watching it on TV. Ah! Sarah. Sarah! Sarah! <laughs> Anybody have a line back to third echelon? I'm here, Fisher. What the hell's going on? Nikolads just declared war on the U.S. What? The Georgians hit our communications, transportation, power grids. We still don't know how extensive the damage is. What's our defense? What are we doing? What do we have? Nikolads caught us with our pants down. All we've got is the laptop you pulled off the O-Rig. My daughter. I know, I know. I've got people heading over there. 
This whole country's a mess. I need to see Sarah. You know what you need to do. We're helpless until we find Nicolads. You're heading for the CIA. Your mission just became critical. Failure at the Red Bear Army Community Hospital in Mississippi resulted in 17 deaths and over 30 injuries. Both county electricity and backup generators were destroyed, leaving military train traveling to Norfolk, Virginia, collided with a commuter rail line after an apparent failure of its automated routing system. U.S. military has not released the contents of the train's cargo, though federal authorities have evacuated a 20-mile radius surrounding the wreckage. Though no official death toll has been given, initial reports indicate the deaths of over 40 enlisted men. Potential civilian casualties are believed to be much lower. The newspapers talking about cyber terrorism, an information crisis, information warfare. Call it what you will, but realize that no American is safe until we mobilize our army. Rescue workers, their information grid entirely disabled, were unable to respond to the crash for nearly an hour. Injuries became fatalities as... To Combain Nicolades, the Georgian president still in hiding. Though his first wave of cyber terrorism focused on military targets, intelligence proposes that a large-scale civilian target could just as easily... We have faced terror before and triumphed. I promise here to the American people that we will triumph again. Earth is too small a place for the perpetrators of these acts to hide. The United States and her allies will enact a justice that is swift, true, and absolute. Time to get to work, Fisher. Let me reiterate. We cannot afford any casualties. The NSA doesn't operate in the U.S. We don't spy on other agencies. I'm not here. That's right. You've lost existence privileges until the mission's over. We've synced a timer on your offset to a pause in the ventilation system fans. We'll have a limited window of opportunity to use it for insertion. What's up, ladies and gents? Sinister when your host here, and welcome back, of course, to more Splinter Cell. This is the CIA headquarters mission, definitely one of the toughest missions, but also one of the funnest in the game. And I'm going to show you some cool things that maybe you definitely didn't see in my last playthrough. We're going to uh, get through this with only taking technically uh, two people out, and those are both mandatory knockouts. Those are the only knockouts that we're going to do. Everything else, we're going to find a way to get around. Uh, so again trying to challenge myself in this version or in this walkthrough previously I would take out multiple enemies I'd knock them out I'd always hide bodies I'd still remain stealthy but in this specific instance we are only going to take out uh, at least in this walkthrough anyone that we absolutely 100% have to take out and those are two guys one guy is at the very very uh, two guys are kind of at the very end of the mission so those are the only guys we're actually taking out everyone else we can find a way around them now this means you have to exploit the game slightly and I will explain that a little bit more once we actually come up to it but for now we're just gonna wait here for this guy to move there is a camera over there we don't have our camera jammer yet so uh, we can't get around it it is the kind of camera that I believe you cannot shoot so therefore we need to just wait until it's looking on the left side and then we can get around now immediately once you get right here this guard will start moving in this direction it is kind of like a script so therefore you need to just sit here and wait for him to move by and then it's going to create the game itself will create an opportunity for us to move along because he's going to turn and this is what I do so when I go through these missions and you can watch them on facebook.com slash sinistrain01 and you can see exactly how I learn these I figure out which directions that the enemies turn in I know it's not realistic but if you know which direction they turn in then you can exploit that he turns to the left which means that if we just get on his right side stay still do not move forward onto that railing yet or onto that uh, stairs because if you do you'll make too much noise as soon as you step on it and then he'll immediately turn around it can be a little tough to do but just time it right wait till he moves a little bit and you're good to go here you got to wait for this script to happen once he goes through the door 
then uh, you can kind of move on up and then we're gonna head inside now if I'm not mistaken there's also another way to get inside the CIA headquarters by not using the, the, the fan but I've never I don't I don't think I've ever ever done that because I've always preferred the uh, stealthy approach as opposed to going straight through the front door or something like that so it's up to you uh, you can do it whichever way you want but this way even though it does add more enemies and whatnot it provides that kind of stealth desire that we all have inside us so once we actually get inside here it's not going to be too difficult we're going to stay to the left back there is a guard that patrols up and down the middle section but very easy to get around we're just going to climb this uh, file cabinet here conveniently placed and we're going to head over to the other side there are two guards that are looking in the direction that we actually came into this room so that's why you don't want to go straight across the room from where we were or else these guards will see us there are metal detectors so you can't go straight through there so you're gonna have to go through this door now this is how you know if you're gonna be good or not you've got to time it okay it may look like I'm just opening the door and I don't know what I'm doing but I do all right this is how you time it the guard that patrols up and down the hallway he specifically goes up and down when he is in the direction or when he is closer to you where the two guys are that is when you want to make sure you go through that door and I already knew this so I knew he was there which means I knew that I can go ahead and get around him even if he did slightly see me it, that doesn't matter that is what you want to do otherwise he will actually be in the other side of the room and then he'll see you every time you enter so make sure the guy patrolling down and up and down that hallway is closer to you as opposed to being at the very far end of the room here we're just going to wait do not do this too soon as you don't want two guards that you have to mess with you'd rather just have one so he's going to enter into this elevator also make a mental note that if you look on the opposite side of this room in the back wall not straight ahead back back that way there's that you see the guard up there he is that guard that you got by earlier so he can still see you from that point so just be careful we're gonna use a little distraction now we're not gonna immediately move forward we're gonna wait until this guy turns around and then he's gonna come back in the opposite direction and then he's gonna do like a little patrol pattern once he starts doing that then it is okay to go ahead and flip the switch on the elevator it's going to take a few seconds for the elevator to come back. So, wait back in darkness. He will continue to make his rounds, moving different directions. Once you hear the noise that the elevator doors have opened, then you can go in. But just remember that it's on the left side, or right side, once you enter. And then we're going to head downstairs, and we have a whole new section. Very, very fun level. I definitely recommend that if you're going to play Splinter Cell, you got to at least try this level out, or at least get to this level. man inside. He says your F-2000's in place. You can retrieve it in the storage room behind the generator backup. Good. I'd be ignorant not to arm you, but keep it holstered. One agency fatality means the mission's over. Just remember there is a guy back there that opens the door as soon as you pass that little section, so be careful when you're going through. We're gonna get on this computer because there Good. is a code it's that we need ideal, to get into the server room. Looks like we're covered. Like I said, this is tight as security gets unless Congress admits... Now here, normally, in order to be able to get into the next section, you have to take out a specific guard. I think we can maintain. But we're not gonna. Sure. I... Yeah, I'm sure. I'm just tired. Overtime? I'm on hour 15. It's a crisis, man. Crunch time. Meaning I gotta get back to it. I'll see you around. If you time everything right, the one guard is going into the uh, the soda can area, the venting area. This guy is leaving now. You can e you can get here, but you got to be super quick because the guard will be coming back and going through this area, and he could see you sometimes. Now, notice where the light is. There's actually a guard right here. He is someone that you actually have to take out. Like, there's no way around it. You have to take this guy out in order to get the code. However, I took him out before I hit the record button, and I got his code. So therefore, I know the code. And the code does not change, at least in this game. So, even though technically you have to take him out, but you don't have to do it on this walkthrough that you see, you just have to do it before, um, you have to take him out, find the code, or find it online or something, and then 
do it. So it's a little bit of an exploit. There's no way around taking that guy out unless you already know the code, pretty much. We're going to be doing that a few times throughout the uh, throughout the game. Even though it legitimately or doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's just the way it is. And we're going to use this computer, and I'm going to show you a cool little trick up ahead. So, we've got the code, which is 110598, and remember the main server code is 2019 from the uh, previous computer that we hacked. So, enter the code, and I'm going to show you how you can get by this next room with no problem at all. Now, I didn't come up with this or anything, but it is it is pretty cool. Okay. Split jump here on top, and then we're going to jump to the other side. Now, a lot of people may have had problems with this section, and then you can just get right by. It's a lot easier than you think. Might take you a few tries, but you'll get it. Grab our weapons, and then we're going to move on to the next section. Okay. 0J-867530. 5, 0 J-8675306, 0 J-8675306. Now you'll see that this guy up here, now you don't have to do yeah, what I do. I, I was debating whether or not I wanted to get the distractible item. You can actually go right behind him, grab the soda can, and get out. But I was like, eh, yeah, I better do it. Because the soda can is actually going to be very, very important for the next section if you want to get by without taking anyone out. Another very, very difficult uh, section because of the way that the guards are not really guards, but because of the way the uh, the repair guys are like kind of situated, it can make it very, very tough. Here, you just gotta wait. GPS shows you within sight of the server. Grim's daughter's standing by. She'll be ready to trace the leak as soon as you can get us access. Once he is moving away from you, that is when you want to move up. But do not go inside the server room. If you do, he will see you because there's so much light. So you want to wait. And get in this shadow right here. Once he turns back around and goes the other direction, that is when you can enter the server room. Any other time, he will see you every single time. There's just too much light in this room. Remember the server code is 2019. We're going to go through the left side first. And we're going to throw the can in the corner. I actually figured this out on stream. It was actually pretty fun. Now, you want this guard to see you. So stand right here, so you're like, there. He'll turn a little bit, he'll kind of see you, and he'll be like, thinking, who's up there? What that does is it ruins his, like, uh, his timing, All so right, it makes everything it. perfect. There's also the guy that's up in the Ooh. left side, Real. on the top of the room. Inside. Just there. The leak is a low security PC registered to one Mitchell Doherty. Great. Doherty's PC is your new objective, Fisher. Sure. So watch out for him. But you can get by that guy. It, it kind of like this guy ruins his his uh, what he's supposed to do. So normally he was gonna go he was gonna go to the other room up here. He was gonna go around and he was gonna check on what he saw. But he couldn't do that because the guard was the other guy was blocking him. So he stopped that route and he went back towards the can. It's like a perfect opportunity for you to use, and it works pretty much every time. So much I'm getting jittery. here obviously you want to wait. Same tactics apply. Because there's so much light in this room, you don't want to, you know, have to worry about that. But as I was saying, because you didn't take out the guard that was in the room above, he can see through the area. So you do not want to get in the bottom section uh, anywhere else from where you actually saw me. Here you can just hide. Very tough to get by this guy without somewhat being seen. But just wait until he is, you know, running along, doing a pattern. And we can go ahead and start moving on to the next area. There is one guard that is patrolling this area right here. So, I don't know where he's going to be on yours. Maybe your timing's not the Please same as mine. No but go ahead and wait for him because he will be patrolling cafeteria. up and down this hallway. All smoking is restricted to designated smoking terraces on the fifth floor. And you're free to move on to the next section and we have our next checkpoint. Here, you just want to jump, the greatest ability in the game. And I think they took that away in Blacklist, right? Or in Conviction, I don't think you can jump either, which is crazy. 
Every game you should have the ability to jump. It just makes sense. All right, so there's cameras we have to worry about here. But if you see that the way that they're moving, you can figure out how to get by them. There's also a guard up top of these stairs on the left. So he can see you sometimes, but there's enough darkness in this room that it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So stay back here until these cameras are out of the way. And you can move by them. And we can move on to the next section. Just gotta worry about this little uh, civilian guy here. Not too big of a deal. He's just copying some papers. Now here, there's nothing you can do about this. You absolutely 100% have to take the light out. It's the only way to get by this without being seen by the camera. So use your brand new weapon and shoot the light. And um, you've already got the code. 110700. And you're ready to move on to the next section. Well, tell Clarence I'm going to have his ass and his badge for this. Because I'm looking at agency photographs of Red Bear on TV. Find out what agency media the press has. Anything they haven't shown yet, get back before they do. I, I don't know. I don't care. Fix it. Can't really get by this guy until he starts moving, unless you want to distract him or whatever. But he's going to head over to the soda machine. And you can enter. There is a turret here. There's a computer there as well. Get a data stick if you want. Use your lockpick. Or you could use your disposable. I don't like to use the disposables. Just because I love the, the lockpick minigame in the Splinter Cell series. I think it's fun. Enter this elevator. And we are going to be heading, I believe, to the roof. Or to the upper area. And we'll have a whole new section. Because I'm Sam Fisher. I get in and out without being seen. Giggity. I just sent you Doherty's file. He's in information retrieval. Office 508. What do I do with Doherty? Stay out of his way for now. We'll get back to you when we find more on it. All right, this section pretty easy. The game gives you an obvious way for you to go. Get behind the desks, wait for the other guy on the other side of the room to not be looking, enter the room, and then immediately uh, go to the room that you see our main target exiting out of. Now, you probably won't know it's him at first, but this guy that's coming out of the room right now is the guy that we are going to be messing with a little bit later, so we want to get in his office and grab his computer. You always know if computer you need to actually do because it has that red screen. Great work, Fisher. How are we doing, Grim? Working on it. Very clever back door. Looks like Philip Mass's work. Bouncing to a server. Surf Kalina underscore VA. We'll call back. Fisher, we're gonna need you to bag Doherty. What happened with Grim? We'll worry about that. You worry about Doherty. Wait for him to take a smoke break. Make grabbing and easier. Details on your offset. Pretty simple. End of the room. We're going to wait uh, for this guy to finish talking. And then uh, Mr. I wear my sunglasses inside to move. And then we'll be good to go. Agent Marks has been trying to sell us on the idea of electrical Death by PowerPoint. Us in the military know this well. He wears his sunglasses inside so he can, so he can. Sorry. I did that in the last walkthrough, too, I think. <laughs> it's just too funny. Come on. Give me a break. These are hospital security access codes. The only parties who have these codes are hospital directors and us. If these codes came from CIA files, then... Excuse me. Yeah? Yeah. Once he I moves, then you're free to go. The, oh, hold on a sec. Um, I'm going to be a few minutes if you guys want to take a break. All right, I'm back. And we'll go ahead and use the disposable pick. Why not? Oh, man, that's rough, Don. Yeah. Like on the train. Is she all right? She's fine, but it was close. I mean, she says she saw bodies. Hey, careful with coffee. So, now my whole family's spooked. 
My wife doesn't want to send the kids to school tomorrow. You spilled your coffee. Christ. In fact, I'm supposed to call her. I gotta run. All right. I'm going for a smoke. You gonna be around later? No, I'm taking off. Hey, you spilled coffee. Somebody's gonna have to clean that up. I gotta run, Mitch. Take it easy. All right, so there is our main guy. Stick here on this wall so that way this guy doesn't see you when he comes by. As far as I know, he stays in the room that he's going to and he doesn't come out. But he could come out if you wait too long. Now, you can actually kidnap Doherty now if you wanted to. Um, but one thing you need to remember is that in order to go through doors, you can't have him on your back. So it's best just to let him run his course until he gets into uh, the rec room. Saves you a little bit of uh, the, the pain of carrying him, dropping him, opening a door, picking him back up. I love the animations in Splinter Cell. Still to this day, some of the best animations ever. Even though it's not realistic to crouch walk like that, it's still, it looks so freaking cool. All right, at this point, you can go ahead and take him out. I recommend you do it now instead of waiting until he gets all the way inside. Junior Wilkes is in position for extraction. He's with Special Agent Baxter, an interrogations expert. They've got a disappearance truck parked in the back. Uh, two different ways you can do this. You can actually keep him held and then enter and then keep walking with him until you get outside. Then you can knock him out and then you can start dragging him because you're a little bit faster. Or you could do it this way. I actually recommend that you keep him held in your hands uh, for as long as you can until you go outside. Um, sometimes this door doesn't want to open. Uh, as you can see, it, it takes a while sometimes. And sometimes it won't open when you have him held. Like, so that's why I opened it and then I came back. But then I realized it shut again and I got scared and I was like, oh, great. That sucks. But it actually will open some. It will open. So don't be, you know, afraid. Uh, when I did this previously, when I was practicing through it, the door would not open when I had him in my body, or when I had him on top of my shoulders, and therefore I was like, well, maybe you can't do it, so, but I guess you can. Stay on the left, or right side here. Even though it looks like we're right next to a light, which we are, uh, it's still considered to be stealthy, so. Makes no sense, but whatever. <laughs> All right, once he goes back the opposite direction, that is your time to go and move forward. If, for some reason, that you decide to do it at a different timing, I don't know if you're going to make it because you're in so much light here, and obviously anybody could see you. So I recommend waiting until you know that he's heading back the opposite direction. Makes the most sense that you'll have enough time to get into the darkness again right here. This is the longest and most drawn-out part because you have to literally carry him all the way to the extraction, which can take a while. I've got another complication for you. Some CIA security dick is chatting up Junior Wilkes and Baxter. How were they spotted? They weren't hiding. NSA presence on Langley is completely legit. Hmm. The only problem is me and Doherty. Right. A SIGINT ninja with an unconscious bureaucrat on his shoulder is less than copacetic, so don't let him see you. As I said, you can't open the door unless you actually drop him. Here, do not run. We're going to walk a little bit until we get down at the end of the stairs. Then you can stand up once you get to that point. Otherwise, this guard, or not really a guard, he's a civilian worker, will see you. Because he actually just got into that position right there as soon as we entered the door. So remember that. He will see you if you move too fast. But you do want to be quick here. That's why I'm walking and not crouching. Once we get close enough, then we can start crouching again because we want enough time to be able to go through this door because this guard goes up a little bit, then he turns right back around. So you don't have a lot of time. This guard down here does the same thing over and over. It's like a three-step process. Um, you're free to move down once he's starting to head right. Get all the way to the right side as much as you can. Even though you're against the light, he cannot see with his peripheral vision and stay to the right. As soon as he passes you enough, then you can start moving forward very quietly. This next guy is a very, very tricky character to get around. And it's not that he's tricky to get around. It's very easy to get around him. The problem is you have a section at the bottom that has a very, very, very long stretch of light. And because of the way that this guard's patterns are, you literally 
can get all the way down there without spooking him, without anything like that. Um, and he uh, he goes all the way back up here. He does his whole pattern, yada yada. But he still has enough time to come back down and actually see you, unless you wait again. And it's a lot of waiting. And I don't want I don't want you have to go through a lot of waiting. So what we're gonna do is we are going to get his attention. Not up here because he's too close. So we're going to wait until he's actually almost on his way down. Because then that provides us enough time to get into the little cover that the game has provided for you. Most likely to put the body so that you can actually probably just go up and knock him out. Because it does say incapacitate the CIA security. But we're only going to take out the one guy that is mandatory. So get seen by this guy. And move into this right box here. Once he sees you, he's going to come right here, but then he's going to go back in the opposite direction. Uh, or he's going to go in the direction that you came from. And he's going to be up here for a very long time, which is going to give you enough time to just continually make your way all the way to where the end of the level is. Again, you can do that without getting his attention, but you will absolutely 100% either have to shoot out the lights or you have to wait. This long stretch right there that you see straight ahead has a lot of light. So, again, very simple. If you don't want to wait like that and you don't want to do it the way that I did it, you can just probably take out this light here to the left to get rid of the light. You can hide in the corner there until he passes again. But why do that when, I mean, it's, it's, it takes way too much time. This guy is mandatory. You absolutely 100% have to take him out. There is no way around it. You mean you actually now, deal with Now, trick is making sure this guy up here doesn't awesome. see it. So, uh, so once he is right? not looking, grab him and then hide his body over here. Now, the other part is, because you stand in this area for a very long time, out in the open, and the guard up there will be able to see you sometimes, so you've got to get the timing right on when to go in, where to drop the body, so as he doesn't see you. So you don't want to do it when this guy is moving in that direction, because there's just not enough time for him to turn around and see you and this is not a big deal because at this point the mission's over you just get in there the mission will end and you'll still be alive it won't be a problem um but we don't we don't want that noise of him seeing us and then like chaos ensuing and hearing that noise is just not something we like thank god i thought he would never go away this our friend that's the man pleased to meet you and that must so be you can see what i'm doing Sorry. i'm getting over We're here he can't see me from here even though it looks gone. like i'm in the complete light He's above us, but he can't see us. So you just want to wait just slightly a little bit to where um, his timing is a little Sarah? bit different. No. She's fine. The black and you'll see his head move here, even though you can't right. really see uh, him that much right now. Emotional. Let's get out of here. Thanks, Will. Appeared on the internet at 3 o'clock this morning. My declaration of war against the United States of America and its allies. Until every last foreign soldier has left Georgia, this war will continue on American soil and around the world, claiming the lives of the aggressors. The scales of power have been newly balanced, and we will no longer accept the tyranny of the United States. Blame the U.S. media for their part in spreading Combain Nikoladze's message. Ironic counterpoint to the situation at home, U.S. soldiers in Georgia and Azerbaijan have spent their fifth night without combat. Though tensions remain high, military intelligence has been unable to locate any remaining Georgian commando. Have dramatically increased their efforts to find Combain Nikoladze. U.S. intelligence is combing a constantly expanding search radius extending from Georgia. Each new country another possible secret alliance with the... Because what we have here is a situation where further airstrikes just won't do any good. Nikolat's army, if that's what you want to call it, is a bunch of... As morning relatives prepare funeral services, America's law enforcement and military forces prepare for the unknown waiting for Combain Nikoladze's next move. 
Fisher, your mission is a man named Diamond. When Grimm's daughter got made in Kalinitech's server, the Kalads' mercenaries got spooked. They're pulling up stakes, wiping out all evidence of their presence, including Ivan and his comrades. Who's Ivan? One of Nikolaz's geeks, a programmer. They're killing their own men. It's all evidence. Let's pray you find him first. Details on your opsat. This is as close as we get. Are you sure you're cool with the details? This last minute stuff bugs me out. I'll figure it out. Well, be careful. I've already got a mother. What's up, ladies and gents? Here we go. A Splinter Cell Kalina Tech mission. Toughest mission in the game, in my opinion. Let us begin. Immediately, as soon as you start, uh, these guards are going to come out. Just do exactly what I did to get up against that phone. And you should not be seen. It might take you a few tries before you actually get it, but you should be able to accomplish it. Here, very, very simple. All you're going to want to do, pick up a bottle and you're going to throw it in the vicinity of the two guards that are in front of the truck. No matter where you throw it, it doesn't matter as long as it is over in that area, then you should be able to get by this without any problems. He told me to think of them as sheep. He says we are... Once you see that they are gone, go ahead and start moving up and you should be free to go. Get up on here and we're going to shimmy across. Now, if you don't care about the no damage policy, you can drop from right here, right on to where you need to go. Otherwise, if you're like me and you don't want to take any damages in the entire run through, then you do not want to drop down and just keep going. With wing of big water is clear. Moving on to six. How many encryption keys did you retrieve? Seven. Are you sure he's dead? Come on, we can see his brain. Of course he's dead. What about his encryption key? The key? Yes, the encryption key. I got it. It's destroyed. Let's move on. Of course, once they're done talking, go ahead and start moving forward. Just jump down. Immediately go over towards the door. Now, normally you will have to knock out this guard to get a satchel in order to get the key code, but we already have the key code, so therefore, um, I can show it off to you guys. So once you get that key code, move on in, and we're going to head into the next room. It really doesn't matter how slow or fast you are in this section, as no guards are right here currently, so you can just continually run until you get to the vent, as no one will have enough time to come in here and find you, so, again, that really doesn't matter. Hey, what is that? Once you're in the event and you go over to the other side, this is where the game can start getting a little tricky. But of course, you've come to the right place, and I'm going to show you how you can get by without taking any of these soldiers out. There's going to be a cutscene up ahead as well. destroyed. Every one of them. Thank God. Make sure you leave the bodies where the fire will get them. Of course. We're going to exit the door without these guys seeing us. You can do it. Don't turn off any lights or anything. And we're going to get over here in this back corner, waiting on them to come by. Once one of the enemies come by, the other is going to head towards the end of this section where the elevator is. However, this guy that's going to be heading towards us can do different things. Sometimes when he opens the door, he stays inside and he just looks in your direction. Other times he will actually come back through the door and back into this hallway. I can't tell you which one is going to happen for you, as he did multiple things. So that's why you see me here. Once I pick up this object, I'm going to be looking back in the direction to see if he's actually heading towards here or not. But once you see that he is still just stuck there looking through, now he cannot see you through that glass even though uh, in reality he would be able to see you through the glass I assure you he will not be able to see you but just make sure he's not heading your way already because then you will get caught being out here we're gonna use this can as a distraction it doesn't matter where you throw it all you have to do is make sure that you throw it near these two guards I, I, I see something weird. once you've seen that they have heard it 
and you get that familiar noise, then you can head back into this room and we're going to get up against the wall. So, the way the distractions work is enemies necessarily do not stop at where you throw a particular item. So if you throw the item, they go and see where it is, but then they continue on sometimes, and then they go in completely different directions. Most of the time, these guys are always going to head back in the opposite corner of where you are, so then you can easily get by, and that should not take you too difficult to be able to figure this out. However, one thing I always want to make a mental note of, never leave your cans behind, ladies and gentlemen. This is a stealth walkthrough. We leave no stone, or in this case, can, unturned. We just sussed a little more out of Ivan. There's a group of mercenary programmers alive on the third floor. They're trapped behind a cluster of wall lines. You think they might have encryption keys? It's worth checking. If you're as fast as I can, you can immediately get over here, and then you're going to want to take out this light. This light's very important to take out for a little bit later. Make sure when you deactivate these wall mines that you do it when it, you hit the button when it's on green, not red. You will blow up if you hit the button when it is on red. I need an encryption key. We don't have any. Why should I believe you? There is a bomb. What? The Spitznas planted it to destroy the data archives, but they put it right next to the gas pipes. It will take out this whole floor. How do I get there? You will need the keypad code for the door. I think it's 33575. Once your fit is talking, try to make a little bit of noise to get their attention. The building specs, that geek story about gas pipes holds up. I'm on my way. Make it fast. You don't have a lot of time. You can always get up against this corner here. The guards will not enter any more than what you see them right there. And we have two minutes and 22 seconds in order to complete this next challenge. So follow them closely. The guards will do different things sometimes. So this may take you a few tries before you get the one that is uh, preferable. But we're going to head out. And that's why we took out the light. As we're going to be hiding right here in this corner. And the guards will be able to see you if you do not take out this light. Now again, guards might not always do what you see me here. That's why you want to wait inside the door until you see exactly what they're doing before you head out into this hallway. Now this is where you're going to need to start really moving with some quickness. As soon as you think you're ready, start going. However, you do have to slow your roll as soon as you get near any wall mine. But you can still move with a little bit of pace here as the wall mine will not blow up unless you're pretty much running. Use your melee to attack this window here. We're going to head along the right side of the room. And as you can see, you can do it. It's not that difficult. The biggest thing is making sure you give yourself enough time in the previous section, so try to get in and out as fast as you can. We're going to be using our lock pick here. It is a full-on lock that you have to do, so I believe there are five tumblers that you have to mess with. And of course, this could be the most nerve-wracking part. But you should have hopefully been able to get by those other sections with just enough time to spare in order for you to be able to complete this section. Now, if I remember correctly, I did the old 007 in my previous walkthrough, so I thought, eh, why not do it again? I've got a little bit of time. Obviously, if you want, you can go ahead and do it and save yourself 20 seconds or so. But I like to live dangerously. And I always remember the scene from Goldfinger where he waits until 007. And, of course, the only thing that you can say in this situation is as follows. Like a glove. Great work, Bishop. That could have been bad. Oh, we've got a new twist for you. I hacked into the power grid. Somebody's thrown the breaker on the fire door circuit. Meaning you won't be able to open the doors until you found that breaker. Details on your upset. 
It's real nice to be back in Sam Fisher's shoes. I have missed it. So here you don't have to worry about any of these guards. If you stay slow enough, they won't hear you, as well as you can move by this one guard here on the stairs. And he should not see you as long as if you stick to the wall as close as you can. Head straight down the middle of the aisle, and then when you get to the beginning of the seats, that is when you want to turn left and the guards should not see you. You don't have to take any lights out, you don't have to do any of that stuff. You should be good to go. I just spotted somebody in the auditorium. Maybe our intruder. I need backup now. Once these soldiers are heading your way, we're going to get into this corner right here, and we're going to get up against the wall. It's conveniently placed there, so a lot of other people maybe take out lights and they stay outside of this area and let them come through. You don't need to do that. Just get up against the corner. Here, you're going to want to do a jump in order to distract the guard. Not necessarily jump, but make some noise so that he actually comes exactly where you see me distract him. As you can see, it can be a little hard to figure out exactly where that spot would be. But once you've done so, he does not take the simple route. He actually goes around, and that gives you the opportunity to move on to the objective. Immediately start moving, because he's going to be turning back around. And you should be able to get back Anybody in time. Anything? Nothing. The bomb. No. There is nothing out here. Auditorium's clear. We are returning to our post. Here, we're going to wait for the two guards that we passed, or that passed us previously. They're going to be coming back around and doing the same exact thing. So wait here. One guard is actually going to be heading through exactly where we are. So make sure you're up against the wall and you're in blackness, or else you do run the risk of him seeing you. The other guy's going to go completely around and do a right angle, and then you should be good to go without him actually seeing you. Now we can make our way to the objective. In order to complete this, you do have to take out one of the guys inside the room. You'll know which one it is because he will have a, uh, a sack on him or a satchel. But we're not doing that, obviously. We already know the code, so... I know a lot of people maybe don't agree with that, but I did say I wanted to minimalize the amount of people we have to knock out, and you technically don't have to knock him out uh, on this specific playthrough. You can do it on another one, find the code, and then continue on. Wait until you have uh, enough time to make sure you get by him. You want to try to make as much noise as you can right here. I know it seems counterproductive, but trust me. Pick up this can as well. The guard should be heading your way. This is going to give you opportunity to go past them while they're uh, opening the door. And if you time it correctly, they should not see you, but it might take you a few tries. We're going to get up against this wall here, and we're going to wait for this guard to come around the corner. Now, you don't have to use this distraction item. You don't have to pick up the can if you don't want to, but I prefer to do that. So what we're going to do is throw the can, but make sure he doesn't see you throw the can, so stay as far back as you can. It's a lot of cans. And as soon as you throw it and he leaves, go ahead and make your way around the corner. And then we have this guy to distract, and we can open the blast doors. Hold, do you read me? Hold, I think I found something useful. A computer with a window that says, Fire Emergency System. Bullet, are you there? Useless. He will not go this way. He will go the opposite direction, so you should be able to always go this way without him worrying about him coming around this corner here. Now remember, the other guard is going to be coming around the corner as well, so you do want to wait. Do not move forward. I know it's tempting. You think you might be able to make it, but don't do it. Good work, Fisher. Opening those fire doors cleared your path to Ivy, but it did the same thing for the hey. Russians. You better make damn sure you get to him first. Once he heads in that direction, you'll also see that the other guard is going to be coming back. It could be different timings depending on what you did to distract the other guards. Again, all I gotta say is just be a little patient. This isn't a speed run through. This is a uh, minimalizing any type of contact with the enemy in any way whatsoever. This is one of those missions that you absolutely 100% positively have to knock people out. And you're going to get into some action scenes. So there's nothing you can do about that, but I'm going to show you how to get around all of the enemies and only knock out anyone that you absolutely have to. Update on your situation. To cover our asses politically, we clued in the FBI. And we're gonna have to leave Ivan for them. So what am I doing here? Ivan's a technicality. 
All we need to trace Nikolaj's is his encryption key. Get that, and we're golden. We were already checked this hallway. We might have missed something. We'll check it again. How could we have missed somebody? Listen, this aura came down directly from Vyacheslav Grinkov. If just one of these geeks gets out of here alive, he'll skin us all. Yeah, well... Well what? Nothing! Hold on a second. I need to visit the little boy's room. Make it fast. Let's take a fan, or let's take advantage of Mr. Poopy, Mr. Poopy Face. And we're gonna head out as soon as they start to turn. We have our trusty can that we picked up. We're gonna throw it to the right. He will not move from this position unless you distract him. Therefore, you will get seen. And go ahead and climb up here. Who are you talking to? Who's on that phone? Please, don't. Tell me who. Here. I don't want the damn phone. I want you to tell me One who. One thing to note that as soon as you get close to him, he will automatically stop what he's doing and conversating. And then he'll do this here. Otherwise, he will not. So it's just a scripted thing. Hurry up and get down. You don't have enough time to grab him, so just get as close as you can and knock him out before he turns, and you should be good to go. Are you Ivan? I... Yes. You are American? I you are police? Great. Yes and no. The police are on their way. Until they get here, I'm the only friend you've got, and I'm not a very good one. We have to leave. We have to hurry. They'll find us soon. That's not my job. I'm here for your encryption key. That wasn't the deal. The deal still stands. The feds will get you out of here alive, but first you have to give me the key. That wasn't the deal I made with the woman on the phone. Listen, do I come to your job and tell you how to murder civilians? What? No. So don't come to my job and tell me how to do mine. The feds are on their way or here already. You're gonna be fine. You can give me the key or I can take it. That wasn't the deal. You're working from a very limited phrase book. Listen. Just give me the key. I'm tired and I hate making people scream. It gets me down. Here. Thanks. And until the feds get here, find a better hiding place. God damn it! Fisher, you're gonna like this. It makes me nervous when you say that. The Russians are all over the top floor. They're gonna have to do some cleaning before the Osprey can safely touch down for extraction. Now you don't have to actually pick up this can, but I just wanted to show you that once you travel between one area to another, you do not save anything that you have in your hands. So we're going to move on to the final section and the toughest section in this map. Alright, so first things first is we're going to pick up a can right here. Now you're going to need to distract enemies. I've actually done this where I've actually shot the light out and did it a different way, but this way is a little bit more consistent. So just throw that over there to get some of them looking in the opposite direction, and that'll give you an opportunity to move forward. Now, this might take you a few times. There's nothing you can do without being seen here. You're gonna be slightly, not you seen, but something seen. They don't know it's actually you, of course. But get up here, and we're gonna move our way around the other side. Just make sure that no other guards are looking whenever you're climbing here, because you still can be seen. Once you drop down, immediately move straight and to the left side. And you should be able to get over here in this corner before they actually move up. I cannot wait for more than Tonight's work is some of the worst I've ever done. It will be yours. This is where the automatic action starts. Nothing you can do about this. You will be seen here. Nothing you can do. But if you get in this corner and then you jump, you can actually go across the other side without taking any damage and without them technically really seeing you, even though they actually still do see you. Here are the only three guards that, well, not the only three, but that you have to take out in the mission, except for the one guard next to the one guy. So we're going to use our sticky shockers, and we're going to take this out one at a time. We're going to try to do this without taking any damage. Now, you noticed that you heard someone get hit there. So actually, I took out all three guards without seeing the other third guard. That is because the ricochet shot that I did on the first guy went to the other guy. That was planned. If you actually shoot it specifically in a, a, an area, it will take out this guy down here. As you can see, he is on the ground. It took a while to actually um, figure that out. It happened by accident. So it was kind of cool to actually get it to work. But if you shoot in a specific area, once the guy comes out, you can take him out by a ricochet, and then you can take the other two out with regular shots. 
So do that before they throw grenades at you. And as you can see, you can get by there without actually taking any damage. But those are the really the three only guys in the action sections that you have to take out. Everything else you can do nice and stealth like. Here, we're back into stealth mode. It automatically brings you back. We're going to do a few distractions so that we can get by these three guys. Otherwise, you will not be able to get by them. All you got to do is shoot out that first light and then shoot out this light here and it should get enough people's attention to all of them to move. However, it can take you a few times before you get this exactly the way that you want it as the guards do not always do what you want them to do. Luckily in this one, both of them went out. And we just need to wait to the moment before we actually move on. That guy moved, so we should be good to go. Take a mental note as well as there is another guard up here in this section, so quickly get to the darkness before that guy is able to see you, depending on how long it took you in that previous section. Obviously, the guard might already have been there. He might not have been there. It's just, you know, you got to get lucky. You got to figure out timing-wise on when you can do certain things. Next section is the toughest to do without taking anyone out, and oh boy. Here, just keep on moving up, and then you're able to get by him. Just stand next to him and just be like, hey, what's up, dude? Once you move forward, we're going to wait here at this corner. And we're going to distract the guy that's going to be walking down. Wait till you actually see him, though, or else you'll distract the guy that's right above us. We don't want him to be distracted. We want the guy at the bottom floor to be distracted. You'll see why. Once you see him there, now go ahead and jump. Now you're good to go. Now, I've had this work for me 99% of the time. Do exactly as I do, get seen, move immediately to this corner, and then immediately right angle it here. If you do so, this guard will always walk in the same line that you do, but keep going straight. Very, very important. Otherwise, this guy could be going back in different directions. That will work 99% of the time if you do it exactly how I do. Take this light out, very, very important, because guards will be coming over into this area. Once the cutscene is over, you notice that that guard is there, he would have seen you if you were not up against the cover and took the light out. Now, this is super difficult. As you can see, it does not work all the time. So, what I'm trying to do is actually do a jump from the corner of the wall to the top of where the helicopter is. Every time you jump, a guard is going to hear you if you fail it. It is something that you just cannot pull off on a consistent basis. But you see me here trying, as you can see, it's a little dark in that area, so it's a little hard to see where the corner is. Now, this is going to take me a few tries, but there is another option. And that option will only work if you still continue to do this way. You need to continue to try to jump up into that upper area. It is okay if you fail but you need to continue to at least try. And at the end of the video, I will show you me actually doing it. However, I took one little bit of damage um, during it, so therefore I didn't want that to be the one because we're doing a no damage playthrough. But as you can see, it's not very easy to do this jump, but you can do it and you'll actually see me do it towards the end here. Uh, it's a little tough. Now what I want you to notice is the guy stopped shooting. Once you hear them stop shooting, that is when you want to start moving forward. But wait until this guy is moving to the stairs. Once he's on the stairs, his programming can't see you, it can't detect you or anything. Notice that nobody knows where we are, we haven't taken any damage, and we're still okay. Once this guy moves, let him go to the left. He'll stay stationary for a little bit. You can go ahead and start moving forward. Head up the stairs. There's also another guard on the other side of these of this ladder, but he's aiming in the direction so he could possibly shoot you. Once you get up here, if you wait long enough, everything will go clear and he will stop shooting and turn around. This is your opportunity to jump forward. This will work every time if you do it the way that I do it. Now, at this moment, 
I'm going to show you how you can actually jump up there and make this a lot easier, but it is a one in a million shot and it takes too long to repeat the checkpoint, so I don't recommend it. As you can see, I took damage, so therefore I didn't count it. Um, Mission's not over. What about Wilkes? We're scrambling for a replacement. We might have a runner in Japan we could borrow, a woman named Cohen. What's in Myanmar? Nicolads. We used the Kalinatech data to pinpoint him at the Chinese embassy in Rangoon. Chinese support for the Georgians? The political situation isn't good. If they are backing Nicolads, you better find rock-solid proof. I don't want to go into World War III without a good reason. You've got some time before you reach Rangoon. Want me to patch a secure phone line so you can talk to Sarah? No. Disaster was narrowly averted at the Pickett Gap Water Treatment Plant in Tennessee. Plant management attribute the malfunction to a remote viral attack, possibly the latest act of terror in the Georgian information crisis. Still have no leads in the search for Kumbain Nikolads. NATO and charity groups working in Azerbaijan continue to uncover the corpses left from what was only the beginning of the Georgian president's campaign of high-tech terror. If not for the swift intervention of plant employees, hundreds or even thousands could have become life-threateningly ill from contaminated water. They say we're safe and all right, but then they tell us to boil our water. Seeing the disaster averted at Pickett Gap, a possible turning point in the Georgian information crisis, marking the first time American authorities were able to recognize and overcome one of Nikolaj's acts of terror. Described early diplomatic negotiations with China a mixture of silence and antagonism. The Chinese claim that the U.S. are using suspicions of Georgian support as an unfounded excuse to inspect Chinese weapon stores and have so far refused cooperation. If possible, lending an even greater urgency to the search for Combain Nicolades. Find the Georgian-Chinese connection. Using intelligence gleaned from the Picket Gap program, Third Echelon has traced communications between Nicolades and the Chinese embassy to Myanmar. Any suspected connection between Nicolades and the People's Republic of China must be proven before any action can be taken. Your contact is in place. Our man in Burma or Myanmar. Whatever. Where do I find him? A rooftop a few blocks from the embassy. Says he's under a large red sign. To respond to the phrase, a bright cold day in April. We've updated your opsat. To be clear. If you kill anybody, this mission's over. You slip up on this one. I'll find a fallen shelter and earn some prayers. I'm glad you understand. Be good. All right, so what you saw me just do there is actually kind of tricky. Make sure you skip talking to her at the beginning, and then you should be able to get through there a lot easier without any worry. But if you do talk to her, they'll already be in place, and then you will not be able to get through it as easily. too much about noise here 
Although you do want to make sure that no one is directly looking when you land over here. Like this guy. Make sure he's not looking up. Stay in this dark area right here. And have a little bit of patience before we actually make our way into here. Wait till they pass us a little bit and then you should be good to go. Again, I'd like to thank all the patrons for making it possible for me to be able to continue doing what I love to do. Don't get too close so they will be able to hear you. We are fishing with dynamite. Nuclear dynamite? America is a big fish. I hope the general has the nerve to follow this through. The general would skin himself alive for the empire. And it's not wise to question him. He's questioning. I've come this far. I would follow him to my grave. I too would follow him to your grave. Me too. Here, we're just going to be following them. I'll be a little bit of distance behind. There are certain moments where they actually turn on their flashlight. And there's a section up ahead when they will... He'll come all the way back. That you have to be careful. Other than that, it's just pretty much tailing them. Uh, it's not too difficult to do. And... Uh, should be able to get it on your first time. The Georgians are another story. Nikolaj is a great man. Yes, of course. Definitely. The colonels I could do without. What about Grinko? Frightens me. Me too. Man has eyes. He is a good soldier. He'll make an excellent sacrifice. Yes. Here, you're just going to want to wait. This guard does come almost all the way back here. So if you move up too much, obviously he's going to see you with that flashlight. And at this point, you're pretty much going to be good to go for going straight ahead. Just give him a little bit of space and you'll be all right. I don't think we can beat the Americans. But what about the Ark? What about the General's device? We've got... Of course we can hurt them. But America has spread too far. We could never crush all the cells. Not this again. What? Tang's got this idea about fast food restaurants and amusement parks. They have the American version of terrorist cells. You know, small, widely scattered, independent, high-tech, coordinated propaganda centers. Uh, you clever. You will see. We can kill their soldiers and flatten their capitals, but we will never beat their hamburger stands. This is why I hate being on patrol with Tang. This point's when they're going to start separating. Uh, the guy in the back is going to go off to the right. Just keep moving forward. And this is where you're going to get up.
Stay right here. And wait till he passes. And we're going to be meeting up with our contact. And we're already pretty much halfway through the level. It's a bright, cold day in April. Good, good. Take this, okay? You're late, but you're here. Okay, we need to do this quickly. Go ahead. That map will show you the general's office in the courtyard. I thought it was the ambassador's office. It was, but some Chinese general has been using it. You can see for yourself. You get into the embassy grounds through the rear service entrance. Is there a gate? Yes, but a delivery truck will be pulling through shortly. You can sneak in past the truck, no problem. But you only have one chance at it. Solid work. I'm very good at my job. Okay, bye-bye. This is definitely one of the more easier missions in all of Splinter Cell. The lighting in this game is just so amazing. Alright, this is where it can be a little tricky. Can be a little tricky sometimes to get through there, but it's not too bad. Make sure you stick to the uh, shadows here. Word of caution, Fisher. That truck's going to be your only chance to get inside the embassy. Be quick Don't here. Blow it. There is a guard. Going on. All you need to know is this: if you do find Nicolades in there, be ready to scramble. One wrong step could mean more. If anybody in the embassy triggers an alarm, we're pulling you out. The mission's over. Wait for this guy to go by. Now there's going to be a dog up ahead that makes it super, super tough. Whatever you do, make sure he is not following you before you get to the save point. Because if he is following you, he will automatically find you and there's nothing you can do.
Now, as I said, the dog is just going to pretty much hunt you down. Which is why you want to stay in the water. There you go. Follow your buddy. Okay, it looks like we might be okay. So hopefully that means we're alright. Like the dog isn't following Good us. Good lord, Fisher. That's General Kong Ferrong. Good lord. Who's that? He was the chairman of China's Central Military Commission until 01. Very high PLA muckamuck. A Chinese general talking to Nikolods isn't good news. Whatever he's going to say when that conversation resumes just became our highest priority. Stay with him. Time to get invisible. Anyone so much as sees you when the mission's over. Now remember. It can be very difficult to get past that dog because he will find you out. You literally have to kind of wait in the water. Um, I had to restart many times because the dog would just always come and locate me. So we're going to need to use the mic one more time. And there is the exit, so we'll have to figure out how to get across. Not the only ones I'm worried about eavesdropping. They are just the most typical. Of course. How many times will the signal be rerouted? You also believe your colder peninsula base untraceable. I understand the psychology of war. Yes, yes. I've attended many executions, but never a military. So hold on a second. Driver, how far away is this for me? Ten minutes, maybe more. But we'll have to stand a police check along the way. No, it's not worth the trouble. I will just watch the broadcast like everyone else. <laughs> yes, too true. <laughs> you are a wicked man, Mr. Nicolas. I hope your performance goes well. Take care. They're going to execute the soldiers. Sounds like it. You've got to stop them. Rendezvous with Cohen. I'll forward her the coordinates for Mook. Mook so ball. Right. Auspicious hunting ground. Damn straight. The time for subtlety is past. I need to get this to the Joint Chiefs. See if this means war. All right, so the next part is we just have to get across the street. But we have to go through a lot of light to get there. Trust me when I say, just be patient. Now is not your time. He moves forward, he turns around, he looks back, and then you're like, ah, this is the perfect opportunity. However, tiseth be not. And I know there's this big red light there that you think you could be seeing, but don't worry. 
kind of got to wait like two cycles before you have the perfect opportunity to move forward. I'm sure there's another way that you could do it, but none that I found that make any sense. As you can see, this can be quite tough. I think your best bet is when he moves now. Very close, but we're good. As you can see, that can be quite quite tough. Hop in the back. We gotta go. Grab hold of something. Though the evidence itself has not been revealed, U.S. intelligence is claiming to have proof of China manufacturing nuclear weapons, a blatant infraction of international treaties. China has made an unmitigated denial of the charges, restating the belief that... Diplomatic talks with China continue to crumble. U.S. military forces are mobilizing towards the anticipation of possible hostilities. China again denies any involvement in Combein Nikolaz's... Oh, my God. Broadcast through the Internet just minutes ago. Cannot allow my nation to be subjected to the blatant international despotism of the United States or the cronyism of its allies. The world is not yours alone. And the soldiers you send into it are all equally guilty of American fascism. At 5.30 p.m. Greenwich Standard Time, the United States soldiers captured in a just war against their motherland will be executed. Their deaths broadcast for the world to watch. Fisher, we're getting close to war. Nicolas kills these men on live broadcast, we're sunk. Are we worrying about the broadcast or the murders? For now, the broadcast. It'll buy us time to stop the killings. Nicolas is broadcasting from an antenna on the roof. That's your first objective. You'll find the rest on your offsite. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back, finally, to a new episode for Splinter Cell. This is our no-knockout walkthrough, pretty much making this entire game as challenging as pos possible. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this first section here, pretty easy. Just do what I do. You should be able to get by that section uh, without any problems. But uh, next section is going to be a little bit tougher. Colonel, this is Badri. The landmines are in place. Make sure nobody without the polarized thermal sensor enters the courtyard. Make sure you try to make as little amount of noise as you can. Go slow. Take your time. Now, there are two different routes that you can take through here to get you through. I'm going to show you this specific one, which usually works more than the other one. So that's why I'm showing this one off. Make sure that you always put yourself back into crouched position when you land. If you do not, then you'll land loud. So in this game was the first Splinter Cell game actually made you have to hit the crouch button every single time you got off on another surface. Whereas in the other Splinter Cell games... When you were already in a crouch position, you would land in that crouch position. Unfortunately, in this game, it doesn't work that way. So you have to press a few extra buttons in order to make sure that you land soft. But as long as you stay away from the light, you're good to go. Continue to move slow. You should be fine. Now, the next section up ahead is very simple. All you're going to want to do is make sure that you only move when it is darkness, and then you should be good to go. This level is... I think a lot would agree the hardest level in Splinter Cell. That is because this game was just not meant to be played the way that I play it. So it's really tough. Once the lights are out, you can move forward. I want all identifying details stricken from the room. 
make sure that you stay off of the actual roof. If you land it all on the roof, you're going to get a warning. After the first warning, you will automatically have someone come out and then you're going to be caught. Once the light goes out, that's when you can start to move forward. If you don't, you'll be seen from down below. And then just pretty much move exactly like you see me. It's not difficult to do. You can do it on your first try. It's pretty easy. However, every section of the level after this part is going to be where true patience and love of stealth is going to come in handy. We're playing the game completely different than what this game was made. This game was made to knock people out. It was made to probably kill a few people. It wasn't made to do it in a kind of bypass everybody situation, which is why this level is mandatory for actually knocking people out. What the hell just happened? The broadcast antenna's down. We've got no outgoing signal. We're under attack. The Americans are here. They've taken out the broadcast antenna. Get Nikolaj out of here. I want his helicopter airborne now. I want a squad of technicians with an armed escort on the roof and repairing that antenna. I want the Americans found and killed. Yes, sir. Sounds like you shook things up pretty well. It's only going to buy us a few minutes. Find those soldiers, Fisher. Make sure immediately as the cinema is over, you run over to this area. A guard is going to be coming through. Be a little patient at the door, wait for him to go by, and you should be good to go. Now when you open this next door, be slow. Don't move immediately. Wait right here just a second. This is going to keep the door open for the guy long enough so he can go right through the door instead of the door shutting and then having him to open it again, which can cause you sometimes to be seen. We have Nicolaj on board. Estimated departure in. This is a very, very tricky maneuver. Obviously, remain as silent as possible. What we're going to do is we need to make sure that we land on the sink in crouched position. If you do not land on the sink there in a crouched position, you will be heard and then you won't be able to pull this off. Just steadily creep your way, do the creep, and then you should be able to get by this guard. It might take you a few times. Very, very tricky to do, but it's crazy. This is Nikolaj. Kill the American soldiers. Take them to the studio and kill them. We'll release the footage whenever we can. Tell Theron we are moving ahead. I'll retrieve the Ark. This is Gringo. I want the American soldiers prepped and in studio. The executions are going forward as planned. Yes, sir. Alright, so for this next area, it's pretty simple. We're just not going to take them out. But unlike the other games, when you use diversion lures and you use your gas, it actually knocks them out in other games. But in this game, it just disorientates them and you would actually have to go up to each individual one and knock them out. Since we're not going to do any knockouts for people that we don't have to, you can actually get through this by using one division lore on all three and then just hurry, move down and go into the next area. Which I will say the next area is definitely one of the toughest areas in this game period. Use the gas. As you can see, they're stunned. And just go ahead and move on by them. We're not knocking them out. Now, automatically, you know, they're going to be wondering what just happened. But they won't come into this room, so you're good. Here is the toughest room in the game. This is the freezer section. I'm sure a lot of you probably remember this and how tough it is. There are so many enemies in a very small area. Do exactly as I do and... Hopefully, after about a million tries, you will be able to do what you're about to see. First room, pretty easy. Wait till he moves, then go. You need to have your thermals on because there is a turret here. And you will not be able to see the turret unless your thermals are on, so you won't know if you can move forward or not. Now here, this is the room that's going to cause you a lot of pain. We're going to do this without taking any one out. Oh boy, it's tough. Now, I live streamed this, and it took a total of about six hours to complete this entire level the way that you're seeing it done in just a short period of time. Obviously, a lot of edits, checkpoints, 
learning the levels. It's crazy. So get right here, wait till he turns, then you can move forward. Sometimes you'll be seen there. It's very, very uh, finicky. As soon as this guy turns around, you're going to get up here. You're going to immediately get out your division lore. And you're going to set the noise. And you're going to do it like five times in a row. Super fast. If you've done it correctly, this guy will start looking in that direction. And he'll be stunned for a little second just waiting there. Then sense. the other guy on the far left side is going to move across to actually investigate. This will give you the room to actually move up and to complete what you need to do. This is very, very difficult to pull off, and you will not get it every single time. That's the nature of this game. In, in Pandora Tomorrow, in Chaos Theory, a lot of strategies that I've showed you are things that you can replicate very, very easily, because the controls were better, everything was a little bit more modernized, and everything felt better. In the original Splinter Cell, the controls really get in your way, and there's a lot of different things that can happen that can screw you up. But here you're going to want to move and do this. The reason that we actually climbed the pipe was because this turret right here. If you try to go past it, the turret will see you and of course you're going to take damage. Since we're trying to go for a no damage and a uh, stealthy, stealthy ghost kind of walkthrough, that adds the challenge to it. And I'm telling you guys, if you could leave a like to show your appreciation for the hard work that this took to actually do it would be greatly appreciated. Also, become a member of our YouTube channel. It helps us so that we continue to do it full-time. This is how we get paid, so any little bit helps. Thank you guys so much for uh, everything so far. All right, so for this next section, very easy to do. Just It just depends on where this guy on the right is. Sometimes he's up there, sometimes he's back. If he's back, it's a lot quicker, but if he's forward, you really have no way of knowing when you come into this room where is he going to be. So, wait until he's moving in the opposite direction. Inch by inch, you're going to want to sneak past this guy here on the right side. Make sure you stay as close to the wall that you can, and then you should be okay. It might take a few times, but you should be able to get through without any distractions. Here, you're just going to want to go ahead and get up against the far corner. Jump up so you can actually grab this. Wait until this guy is turned around before you actually do that. And then when you drop down, make sure you do exactly what I do. Don't try to just jump in there because you'll just continually, you won't, you won't be able to jump in. So you have to do that right there. You have to go in from the grate. Here, I mean, very simple. Get out, wait for the guard to be moving in the opposite direction. Once he has moved in that opposite direction, then it becomes pretty easy uh, to escape the first half of the level. Now, the second half, I would say, is the toughest part in this level. I know the freezer is a ridiculous section, but what I'm about to show you is something that will take you millions and millions of tries to do. And then it's very tough, but as you will see, you can pull it off. Alright, so we're going to be heading into the next area. It'll do a little cut here. Alright, so here you're going to want to immediately move as fast as you can until you get to this point, and then move to the left. I find it easier to use the uh, SC-20K instead of the pistol, because the pistol is horrible. Pistol does not shoot right. You're going to see this guy's shadow. Once he turns, take two steps forward, and then run. Zoom in. Shoot. Zoom in. Shoot. Move around the horseshoe, and then all the way to the back behind the turret. I know you can't see what's going on right now, so I recommend you watch that a few times in order to completely understand it. We're going to switch to pistol here. You should be able to get by without the turret hitting you and without the guard seeing you. This guy does different things. Look back and see what he does. If he continues to move back, then you're free to move forward. If you see him start to turn around, you're going to want to not move into this area just yet or else he'll see you right here. It just depends on what he does, and it's always different. Here we're going to take out and deactivate the two turrets. Actually, you only need to do the one that's on the left right here, because the other turret will never really see you from where we're going, so you can just do the one. You saw what I did there. I ran up against the corner, and then I ran so that this guard would hear my footsteps, and the other guy is just doing his patrol. This is really tricky. Make sure that you turn around and you go slow when you go through here. 
Wait until the turret is on the far side. Now, this will take a few shots. Even if you see me aiming perfectly, it's just how the game is. The game is horrible when it comes to aiming. And then do a nice little roll, and you're good to go. Very tough to get through. Holy crap. I, I, I wish... Just watch the live stream, and you'll understand how tough it is. Once they're done talking, you can move forward. Now you've only got the final area in the game, and it is a lot easier to do once you memorize where they're coming out. It's probably one of the easiest to do in this level. This is where you absolutely have to knock out people. There's nothing you can do. But it says you need to kill the, the main guy, Green, Grinko, I think his name is. But you don't have to. You can actually knock him out and you will still get... Um, it'll still count. Grinko wouldn't let them torture us. He kept saying we had to look pretty for our execution. What you're going to want to do is you want to go all the way to this side and talk to the Chinese ambassador. You are American. You're Chinese. The PRC ambassador to Myanmar. I must speak with a representative of your government. They hear everything I do. Shoot. Kong Farong does not represent the will of China. He is a splinter faction of the Chinese army. All of them fanatics and fools. What does he want? First, Taiwan, with others to follow gifts to the PRC he thinks they will not be able to refuse. How is Nikolaids involved? Trade. Farong provides transport and munitions in exchange for weapons-grade nuclear waste. Does China know? No. And unless they are issued proof of Farong's activities, I fear the certainty of war. What's the proof? On the computer in his office. My office. He has overridden and reset the lock. I force him to open his computer and forward the contents to the PRC. And our countries don't go to war. Such is my hope. All right, here we go. So immediately run up and go to the left. We're going to get out our airfoil rounds and aim about right here. It's going to take you a while before you get used to it. First guy is going to come right here. He's going to pop his head up and you're going to take him out in one shot. Second guy is going to come running up on you. You're going to hit him in the body as soon as he comes up and knock him out with your fists. Third guy, you want to go ahead and switch to your, um, whatever you call that one, I, the sticky shot. Wait for him to come around the corner, shoot. Immediately switch back to your airfoil, get up, and we're going to take out the come guy in the red beret. Immediately get down and get ready to fire another shot on this guy as soon as he comes around the corner, and then hit him. All that's left is uh, Gringo, and then what you want to do is uh, use your Sticky Shocker, and this might take you a few times. There you go. So, once Gringo's dead, he's scattered. Let's hope so. Gringo dead! He killed Gringo! Repeat that! This is why Gringo is dead! Fisher, Echelon just picked out an intercept. Mirong knows that Grinko's dead and Nikolads is gone. That's not good. Get back to the embassy. He's trying to destroy the evidence that could keep us out of a war. Right. Since the unexplained interruption of the webcast executions, no information of the captured American soldiers has surfaced. Has instated a complete media blackout regarding diplomatic negotiations between the U.S. and China. Authorities warn of the very real possibility of Georgian mercenaries releasing falsified news reports. The possibility that China was in any way involved in the still unconfirmed execution of American soldiers. In the hope that the crisis can be averted before leading to world war. We'll make this fast, Fisher. We need proof that Farong represents a splinter faction opposed to the Chinese government. Am I still on leash inside the embassy? Not at all. You're fully authorized to use lethal force. Fifth freedom with everybody, except Farong. We can't risk killing him until we've got proof. We're done with politics. This is war. 
This is as close as we get. Lambert's worried about spooking Farong. We'll make it work. Do good, Agent. I don't want to go to war. What's up, ladies and gents? Sinistrina 1, your host, and welcome to the next video in our Splinter Cell walkthrough. This is something that I never thought we'd be able to say, but I believe that we have accomplished a world record in this level, meaning that we take absolutely nobody out. Nobody. The only person that we even touch is the main target that you have to interrogate him. We don't even kill him. We don't knock him out. We don't do anything. So I have figured a way how to get through this entire level without taking a single person out. And I believe... I'm not 100% sure, but I believe I might be the only one. We're going to have a whole mess of keypad locked doors to get around, and we won't be able to count on captured intelligence for the codes. And we'll need to improvise. So, again, if you want to watch how I figured all of this out, uh, you can check out the live stream. Other than that, I'm going to pretty much just guide you through this entire mission here. We're going to wait here. The rest, just do exactly what I did. As you can see, it was very easy to get through. Once he actually turns around, that's when you can go ahead and make your way forward. first part of this uh, entire level is very, very easy to pull off. And all you're going to be doing is a little bit of platforming, so I can get the chance to go ahead and explain a few things to you that's going to happen up in the next section. So, the next section, you're going to go up against these three guys. Normally, the game is meant for you to take those three guys out. And the reason I say that it is scripted for you to take them out is because there is music that plays. So once all three of those guys are alive, the music will continue to play. But once you take out those three guys, the music will stop, and then you continue on with the level. However, if you're able to figure out how to get around those guys without taking them out, the music will still continue to go, which is kind of like a glitch, but you will be able to get through the next section. We've got an idea for the keypad locked doors. Go ahead, Grim. The average temperature in the embassy might be cool enough that you could sense a heat difference on the keypads. It's worth a try. These doors are our only way forward. All right, so here we go. So normally you would take these three guys out. But we're not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is we're going to shoot out the light. It will not disturb them because there's other noises going on. We're going to sneak around this guy and we're going to go ahead and move forward. It's very easy to do, but a lot of people may not thought you can actually do this. Now normally when you take them out, the music stops. But because we're not taking them out, this music will continue the rest of the first part of the mission. Grim, how does it look? I don't know how much of this we can use. They wipe clean most of them. Lambert, take a look. Oh, you're dead. We just found the missing in Earth CM239. Back in a second mission. If you don't want uh, to be seen, you have to take these two lights out or else those guys will still see you. New objective to Germany. There's a convoy of trucks in a warehouse on the embassy grounds. We can make sure they never leave. I know you're not equipped with enough explosives, but... And anything with a full tank of gas is a bomb ready for a fuse. Do I need to worry about radiation? The components aren't assembled. Don't trigger anything nuclear. The first thing we did as soon as, the uh, as soon as we got control is we ran. You gotta run. It, uh, it makes it so they hear you and they do what they're doing here. If done correctly, they should be moving back and forth and get into this corner. There is a camera, but if you stay on the outside that you saw us run around that little uh, area there, then you're in the dark. And then here you can just go ahead and move forward. Now, these guards will do different things, so sometimes you just have to fly by the seat of your pants a little bit, but you should be able to accomplish exactly what I did, and it shouldn't take you too long. Here, just enter the door and then turn back around. We'll be pulling out soon. Relocate your patrol to the main hall. So the thing about this section here is you need to use your thermals to see what the, the codes are. But if you're quick enough, then you don't have to. As soon as you see him go up the stairs, wait one second, and then go. If you do that, this guard will not see you as you exit. Go through the door and then back out. That resets the timer for the door to close. You're going to get on this right side here. Now you got to watch out for the turret. Don't move too far to the left. Wait until the turret is looking to the left. And then go up. This can be a very tricky thing to do, so just, you know, give it a few tries. 
Now this is even trickier. Sometimes you won't be able to jump on this wall. So just all I can tell you is try to do exactly what you see me do and you should make it. Make sure you have your diversion camera out. Use the noise and then you're free to go. Now you're gonna climb this here. Now what we need to do is we have a lot of lights we have to take out if you wanna do this correctly. So first light is gonna be on the left here. As you can see, we moved a little bit too far, but the shooting is not very good with the pistol. We're gonna take out that light. We're gonna take out this light and the one above us. As you can see, it's really bad. And you still need to take out one more right there. I know you can barely see it, but you gotta keep shooting until you get it. Every night, every light needs to be taken out in this specific area because guards are looking right at you and you won't be able to make it over here unless you do it. Now, it's gonna take a while. So you might be asking, why are we doing it this way? That is because there is a way for you to get around. That's right. We can get around the guy who does the, the eye thing or whatever you want to call it. Normally what's going to happen is the commander or the colonel is going to use the retinal scanner to open the door. Then you knock him out and then you go up to that door and use the retinal scanner on him. But if you create a distraction while, or should I say, just after he used the retinal scanner, then you're able to get them to move out of the way while the door is still open and you can go through. It is very tricky and you're probably not going to get it. This is something that is only going to happen maybe once in a million times. This is not something you can probably pull off or replicate on an easy basis. But if you're able to do exactly what you see me, because what I did was when I went through this level, I finished it and I took out the three guys and I took out this guy. But then I thought to myself, maybe, just maybe we can find some way to take to not take anyone out. So I went back in the live stream and we redid it, just these first two sections here, and then we found a way. Unfortunately, this takes a little bit longer because if you don't shoot out all the lights like I did, then they're automatically going to be, you would already be past this part, but because you have to shoot the lights out in order to hang exactly where we're hanging. Because you've got to get close enough to do this. Make a little noise when you drop. Notice, you already heard the thing start going. Don't drop until you hear the noise. Once you hear the noise, that means he's already done it and you can go ahead and create the distraction. Boom. Guys, I believe we are the only person that may have figured this out. Again, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but that was a freaking challenge. All right, so moving on here, you're going to immediately, as soon as you get past this threshold, jump down and go to the right, and then immediately come back to the left. If done correctly, these two guards should not be able to get the drop on you, but they will start moving forward. This can take you a few times as there's a guard on the left as soon as you enter this area that will see you. He's the one that originally sees you and then this guy sees you as well. So it can be a little tricky. You might get seen a few times, but you should be able to get around it. But as you can see, the music isn't playing anymore because it loaded into a new section. So thank God. Remember, we did that. The game was not expecting us to do it. We literally broke the game and that's why the music continued to play that whole time. Here, wait. He's going to see you. As soon as he turns, move up. Don't move too fast because he'll hear you and then he'll move to where you are now. So you don't want to move too fast, but you don't want to be too slow either. This is so he keeps going around to where you originally were and then you can get around. Next section is really easy to get through. All you have to do is just wait for like uh, uh, two seconds in one part, which is kind of confusing because this little section right here has its own save point and it's really not needed. So wait till him to turn back the other direction and then you can go ahead and move forward. It might be a little hard to jump through here sometimes. But there's a retinal scanner here, that's why you need to hurry up and try to get as close to him as you can. Here you're going to go ahead and get out your diversion camera and you're going to put it in the bottom of this area right here where I'm aiming. Wait a few seconds. Trust me, waiting is is what you want to do because you don't want the other guy to hear it. 
Once he moves in, then you can move up. This can be tricky. There's a camera right above you. So wait until you think you're going to be able to make it without the camera fully seeing you. As you can see, very tricky move to pull off. Here, you should be able to run, but do a roll. Because there's a camera straight in front of you. And if you wait too long, the camera will see you. Alright, so here you just want to make sure no one is looking in your direction. And if you've done it correctly, you should be good to go. That's enough, man. We've got more than enough fuel on board, and we need to get moving. Okay. This part's pretty easy. Go ahead and switch to your SC-20K, and we're going to go ahead and shoot the, the gas. Or the pump, should I say. Now, there's nothing over there. I was just waiting for him to finish what he was saying. And we're going to drop down into the next area. Now, this part can be a little tricky. Because sometimes this guard will still see you, even though he shouldn't. But it does happen. And I don't know why. It's just very finicky. It's kind of like you've got to be in the most perfect spot for this guy not to see you. Otherwise, you are absolutely 100% going to have to take him out. But give it a few tries. I mean, you can try different areas on here uh, where I actually get works. But it doesn't always work. Sometimes he will see you even if you're in this exact same spot. Now make sure you uh, quickly get to this little shadow area. There's another guard that's going to come up. He's the guy that we're going to be following. I need help. The general is trying to kill himself. Where are you? His office. Hurry. All right, and just follow him. The other guy is far enough back to where he won't see you. Now you want to stick as close as you can to this guy. Don't let him get too far ahead. This is all on a timer. You need to be able to uh, get these codes on a quick... You have a timer. You have a limited amount of time to actually do this. If you don't do it in the correct amount of time, then the mission will just fail. So you're going to use your thermals, and you can see it's going to go lightest to dark. So it's going to be um, 1, 4, 5, 6. Hopefully you're able to figure that out. So the darker it is, or should I say the redder it is, that's the, the last number. And then the lighter it is, is the number that you want to hit first. So that one specifically should always be 1, 4, 5, 6. Now remember, all of this is on a timer. So you got to get up quickly and you got to get through each door as quick as possible until you get to the checkpoint. Because you will fail this if you are not quick enough. Now this one you can see that it is 1, 8, 3, 4. And again, it just follows that pattern. The lightest to the reddest. Seven, nine, two, one. And there you go. Last up is the final checkpoint, and you should be good to go on this one. This one's not too difficult. I'm going to shoot myself. Not in the face. <laughs> you are American. You are. The cause of all my sorrows, yes? Perhaps you will do me the favor of killing me. Immediately go to the left side and jump up over this. If you don't do it quick enough, he will shoot you. And get behind him. 
I'm going to unlock the data in your computer, and you're going to help me. Go to hell! You can't force a dead man into anything! You're not dead yet. The rest of your life is all you've got, and how painful that is depends on your cooperation. My life was suffering long before you got here. Do your worst! <laughs> Will do. Where did Nikolaus run to? I don't know. I don't care! You owe the man no loyalty. He fled. He betrayed you. I hope you find and kill him. But I do not know where he is. Okay, we're going to use the computer. Now, he just falls to his death. We don't actually do anything. Therefore, technically, we didn't knock anyone out. He just falls to his death. Fantastic work. Grim, how does the data look? Solid. This completely separates Ferron from the Chinese. Fantastic. Add the relevant stuff to the Joint Chiefs. Or with the same to Joint Chiefs. Be sure we're done in Myanmar. Beat going and get the hell out of there. All right, so just be careful. You see me stop at certain places. You can still take damage in these uh, sections. And that's it, ladies and gents. We have done something I don't believe anyone else has. If, if they have done it, let me know. I mean, that'd be great to know. Fisher? time we talked about the Ark. What is it? What Nicolades wants most in the world and what we're going to catch him by. That's all we know. We know the Ark is hidden somewhere inside the Georgian presidential palace. And we know Varlam Kristavi is letting him take it. Who's Kristavi? The new president of Georgia. Pushed into power by our friends at the CIA. It doesn't make sense. We'll do the thinking. Your primary mission in Georgia will be Nicolades. We get him and the game's over. The good guys win. Were you talking to Lambert? Yeah. How soon before we touch down in Georgia? We don't. You'll be making a halo jump. Good. Dad, is that you? Sarah? It's good to hear your voice. Are you coming home? The TV said you guys beat Nicolas. It's not that simple. So you're not coming home? No, honey, not yet. But soon. sigh of relief as the U.S. returned to a state of amicable diplomacy with China. The swift action of the CIA and Chinese intelligence revealed a splinter faction of the Chinese military covertly supporting the Georgian information crisis, declaring a national day of mourning for those lost in the Georgian information crisis. Confirms the consummate defeat of Kambayn Nikolaz's cyber warriors. The acts of information terrorism have come to an end. And in a ceremony later today, President Bowers will be issuing an official thanks to the CIA, FBI, and U.S. Special Forces for their role in bringing an end to the crisis. Though his whereabouts are still unknown, Combain Nicolades is essentially powerless. We have torn off the scorpion's claws. We have severed his tail. And he cannot stay hidden for long. Welcome back to Georgia, Fisher. Our cleanest path to the Ark is President Kristavi's records. Details on your offset. What if Kristavi gets in my way? Don't touch him. He's copacetic with the CIA. If Kristavi dies, the mission's over. What's up, ladies and gents, and welcome to the final mission for our Splinter Cell No Knockout Hard Kind of Invisible Ghost Walkthrough. So, check this out. You can complete this entire mission without taking anyone out. The only thing that you have to do is obviously kill the main objective, but that is it. Everything else you can get around, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. This wasn't easy, but it also wasn't super tough like uh, some of the other missions. Uh, the hardest thing right here is just getting through this little parkour section, as you're probably going to die a few times. Um, it's just the way that the game is programmed and whatnot. It, it's really hard to do some of this parkour stuff, especially when you're trying to leap jump from one area to the next. Sometimes you can calculate the wrong angle and then you'll accidentally fall to your death. But other than that, it won't be too bad. So once we get up here, all I can say is that this is not how it's going to happen for you. Is maybe you'll get lucky. If the enemies seem like they're in 
this type of orientation when you come up to the part that I tell you, then that means you should be able to get through it exactly like I do. But there is a lot of what ifs. It always depends on where the enemies are when you hit this save point right here. That will depend pretty much where these enemies are going to be. So if you're in the same spot, this is how you're going to want to do it. Otherwise, it's going to be different. Why don't you clean up after your dog? Who is that? Get that damn spotlight out of my eyes, you filthy sniper! Notice how all the enemies are on the right side, so that's not always going to happen. Sometimes these enemies are going to be on the left. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. So just watch out for the flashlight. Speed up ascent. And make sure you're moving slowly. The dogs will start to follow you automatically. There's nothing you can do about that. But if you're quick, you're good. You're going to make a little bit of noise here. That is to get this guy's attention so he'll come and inspect it. Quickly, if you've done everything in the amount of time that I have, get over to here and hurry up and get to this code. This code will always be the same, so whatever you see me enter, 2126 will always be the code. If you do it quick enough, you can get to this point and have this ready. The other guard that you distracted, he's still in the other area. So once this guy turns around, you're free to move to the left and you can get through this section without any problems. Hopefully it'll work out the same way uh, as it will for you. So this next bit up ahead is pretty simple. All you want to do is go to the far side of the room to trigger the next thing, and then immediately come back. Stand on the left side of this door. The do area. not stand on the right side of the door. If you do in the right side of the door, the guard that comes over to that area will trigger the, uh, the laser, and then for some reason, just because you're close to it, you'll automatically be seen. There's going to be a total of four guards that come out of this door. So wait to the fourth one. Just turn around and make sure that no one is looking in your direction. And as you can see, you should be able to get through here with no problem. Here, if you can do a jump correctly, you can make this a lot easier, but sometimes Sam will jump to the left, sometimes he'll jump to the right. So in this instance, he jumped on the left side to the right. If he does that, just shimmy along the way. As you'll see, there are three lasers right here, so obviously you can't jump them. You're just going to need to keep moving, and you don't even need to let go. Just keep moving to the left, and Sam will automatically let go. Jump up here as well, as there's other lasers, and then we'll move on into the next section, which you want to do exactly what I do in order to be able to pass this. Those aren't palace guards. Some kind of special forces. Georgian elite. Probably Kristavi's men, which would suggest Nikolaj's is local. Does that affect my game? No. Find those interrogation files. And Kristavi's men aren't going to be much friendlier than Nikolaj's. You're authorized for lethal force. Now, if you do everything the way that I just did, this is how it's going to work. I if you wait till he's past that pole that you saw him at as soon as I started going, then he will not hear you and you are good to go. Sometimes the guard below can hear you, but a lot of times he doesn't. He doesn't really matter. Even if he does hear you a little bit, it doesn't matter. You're going to be fine. So you're going to go up here, move slow enough to where you're not making too much noise, and you're going to be able to get this code without knocking him out because you are, we already have the code, so I'm just going to tell you what the code is. 7002. If you do that um, and just kind of inch your way forward, now you do originally get the code off of this guy, so you do have to knock him out once um, to get the code, but if you already know the code, then you're fine. So you're going to have to wait a little bit here, as this it all depends on how long it took you to get through the room before, because you have to wait until they come to this point. Then they're going to start going back, and then the two guys are going to come out, one on the left first, and then one on the right. Wait till the one on the right is coming out. Make sure you guys click join to help us out. This is what we do for a living here on YouTube. So um, click that join button. There are four different tiers that you can join. It's just like Twitch subscriptions. It helps us out and allows us to continue to make these awesome videos for you guys. This is what we do for a living, meaning that um, if we're not able to sustain it, obviously we're going to have to... Uh, not be able to do YouTube pretty much um, in, in order to so we want to be able to continue so just if you can help out it always does help if you can't just make sure you always leave a like and you uh, share the video as much as possible 
If you've done everything the way that I've done, you should have no problem getting around the camera. The timing wise should be perfect. And then just use your lockpick to get through here. This next section is not difficult at all. You just need to be as quick as you possibly can be. Now, the Xbox and PC versions are a little different, and this will not be the same exact way on the PC version. So as soon as you jump here, start running and go as fast as you can. If you take too much time, he will see you every time you're on this laptop. But if you do it now at the point that I did, he will get a little glimpse, but he won't go into aggro mode, and you're good to go. The Ark is a Saturn. A what? A special atomic demolition munition. You mean a nuclear suitcase bomb? Yeah. I'll get back to you. Obviously, we're going to wait for this. Be a little patient. The Ark is the mission, Fisher. Get it. It's in a safe inside a vault in the library. Locked by scanner to Nikolaj's retina. So I'm going to need Nikolaj's alive. Maybe it That's was right. part of this Nikolaj's business. Wait till the guard turns, and make sure the camera is facing in a different direction. There's going to be one guy that comes through this area here. Stick to the right side and get up against the wall and uncrouch. He should move exactly by you without actually seeing you or hearing you. And you've pretty much made it through this section. you got one camera to worry about, but you're in the dark enough to where you can just continually move, even if the camera is looking right in your direction. And we're going to move on to the second part of the level. Here, you're going to have the code inside your opsat. Nikolaj is inside. Everybody at alert. We are retrieving the ark. Be ready to get out of here. 6676. You're going to get all the way up here. Now, these guards can be doing different things. A lot of the time, they bunch together, but sometimes they could be at an equal spacing apart. So... I can only give you the uh, strategy for when they're a little bit bunched together, but if they're a little spaced apart, you just got to kind of be on the lookout and go when you think you can go, right? A lot of stealth has to do with a lot of just kind of getting a feel for everything. So stay close to these guys. As soon as he turns, then go ahead and switch the object and go ahead and set your uh, elevator to down. Sometimes this guy can see you, so if you are spotted, just start it over. This next section is really tough, the next two sections. But we'll show you how to get through it uh, with no problems. We have an intruder, some kind of American commando. Get Nikolaj into the vault, keep his head down until we take care of this. This is an automatic detection. Here, you're gonna move forward to the right, keep going, do not stop, move as fast as you can, and you will not get hit. A lot of people are gonna be like, whoa, how did you just do that? Because that's a tough little thing. Just do exactly what I do. We'll do it every time. Here, I'm going to use the Air 4 round on Nikolaj's because I don't want him to actually detect me, even though it doesn't matter. But I, th I think it's fun to just kind of knock him out a little bit. Even though we're not knocking him out, we're just using one. Just to keep him still. And then we're going to go ahead and interrogate him. Tell me about the ark. Let me walk away. I can make you rich. I know what it is. I want to know where it came from. This gets you no help. What are you going to do with it? With what? The Ark. Where are you going to detonate it? Kill me or let me go. What you're doing now is hopeless. Tell me about the Ark. This is pure. I'll say no more. Nobody move! Hands in the air! Nobody move! Nobody move! Switch to your smoke oh, grenades. Nicolas. And who is your friend? An American? And wait. Ask him. You will give us the Ark. I am not God. You will give us the Ark. I honestly don't know what you are speaking of. Christavi knows it is a nuclear suitcase bomb. And he knows you have it. Clever man. Does he know that it is already in America? What? The Ark is not here. Keep talking. The only thing in this vault is the activation. The bomb itself is in America. If Christophe guarantees my freedom, I'll tell you where to find the Ark. Give us the activation key. This spy has the key, this American. You'll have to take it from him. I can give you the location. 
but only on the condition of my safety and freedom. Agreed. You two, escort Mr. Nicolas out of the library. You, who are you? Don't talk, Fisher. We're arranging for a blackout in five seconds. Make the most of it. When he counts down and you hear two, he that's when you want to move forward. To you can hand it to me, or I can take it from your corpse. You have five seconds to decide. Four seconds. Three, two... Do what I do. We're going to throw um, two smoke grenades to the right. And then air four around. Hit him. Keep moving, and there you go. A lot harder than it looks. As I said, that could take you a while to get. So remember, two smoke grenades to the right. Immediately go to airfoil. Keep moving while you're shooting the airfoil round, or else uh, you still might get shot. Wait till that guard is past that pillar, the third one, the and then American you're good to go. carrying intelligence vital to the safety of our nation. If capture or death is our highest imperative. All I can say is it's going to take you a while before that actually works, but I promise you will be able to get it. Easy headshot. Sharp work, Fisher. It's time to get scarce. That data you're carrying is the last of it. The last of what? Nicolad's is threat against the U.S. Here, you're just going to remove as quickly as you can. Shot fired in Kastavi's office. And get up against the table. What's Kastavi's status? Cover President Kastavi. Now, the reason we're up against this table instead of like what I did on my last walkthrough of this game is because we're this is a spot that you can get, one of the only spots where you're still kind of invisible. There you go, ladies and gents. Follow the rest of it, and you should complete the level. Make sure you land soft here. And dining hall are clear. The assassin There you go, ladies and gents. Intelligence gained from the Georgian Presidential Palace identified the Ark as a special atomic munitions device. The fact that it was already in place a short distance from Washington, D.C. made Nikolaj a clear threat of the safety of the American people. In accordance with the Fifth Freedom, that threat was neutralized. Good job. An eight-story apartment building and surrounding four blocks in Hopegate, Maryland, were evacuated today by the National Guard. Authorities cited a gas leak as the reason for the evacuation, stressing that today's events had no relation whatsoever to Combein Nicolaitz or the Georgian information crisis. Hopegate, less than half an hour from downtown Washington, D.C., will... <laughs> since the recovery and confirmed identity of President Combein Nicolaitz's corpse 
five days ago. Palace guards fatally shot President Nicolás in the midst of what appears to have been an attempted ousting of acting president Varlam Kristavi. In a press conference this morning, U.S. President Bowers lauded the American people for their courage. We were injured, we stumbled, but we did not fall. The world knows no hardship or terror that American tenacity cannot overcome. The world knows no problem that American ingenuity cannot solve. And so Dad, I extend my so deepest funny? admiration to every U.S. citizen of the world, to every civilian and every soldier standing firm against the terror and tyrannies of wicked men. History will not forget your resolve. <laughs> History will not forget your resolve. Dad, what's going on? You haven't laughed since the Reagan administration. <laughs> it's nothing. Forget about it. We have kept the bright flame the of American line, freedom burning me. throughout oh. the world. May God clear our vision and strengthen our minds for the work to come. And may God bless America. You're not leaving again, are you, Dad? Hello, Lambert. All right, Fisher. We'll get through this as quickly as possible. We'll start simple. Climb up onto that ledge, over that pool. So I decided to go ahead and add the little Easter egg at the beginning of the game. This is the training level, and I know a lot of you had asked in my first training mission video to show the Easter egg, so I thought, well, we would show it at the end of this one. So hopefully you guys enjoy. So just do a little jump over to this side. Uh, the code is 5656 and you get the chance to speak to Grim. Thanks again, guys, for watching the walkthrough. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Who are you? You must be Sam Fisher. I'm Anna Grimm's daughter. Pleased to meet you. Third echelon lead programmer. You've done your homework. Some of it. I'm still a little foggy on my opsat. The Operation Satellite Uplink. Basically just a multi-million tax dollar PDA. But it'll tally everything you'll need to know to complete your missions. So make sure you're comfortable with the interface. No need to introduce yourself. I've already got an earful of your history from Lambert. I'm not as mean as he says. On the contrary, the man thinks you should be canonized. <sighs> what? The saint of shady causes? I don't know. How about the saint of well-directed sins? You were involved with Second Echelon, right? Yeah, briefly. I had some ideological differences. Like what? It didn't respect the human element. Were you there for the burnout in 2000? Yeah, but I don't even have clearance to think about it. Good luck on the course. God damn it, Fisher. I went out on a limb to get you recruited for this detail. What the hell are you thinking? You're fired. You're out of the agency. Game over. Sam Fisher will return, and so will Sinistrain 01 in Pandora tomorrow. Peace out. <laughs>